truth behind the dragon song war laid bare by the warrior of light the Ishgardian populace was cast into confusion and despair the entire basis of their history and faith shaken to the core in these uncertain times even the young students at this storied academy cannot avoid being embroiled in a web of uncertainty and intrigue let's do it let's do it Closa just hanging out at the market today. Doing good, having fun. Oh, who is this guy? We haven't the coin to buy the mutton if mother learns of this. <laughs> I told you we shouldn't have gotten those honey cakes. Yes. Now what do we do? Oh, rip the kids. They shouldn't have gotten those honey cakes. rip a -roni. Good day to you, miss. How may I help you? Oh, you wish to help me? Well, your timing couldn't be better. It would seem I have misplaced the record of sales for my most esteemed client, St. Endolim Scholasticate. Said client has requested another volume of the 72 Articles of Hellenic Polity. There are 14 in total, and try as I might, I cannot recall which one they specified. Surely you can imagine how embarrassing it would be if I were to ask them again myself and that they would learn the reason why. It is why I wish to ask you to go in my stead. No need for overt inquiries, mind. Just make small talk and surreptitiously examine the shelves and see what might be missing. Yay! Time to be sneaky. Time to be a sneaky girl. Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, oh, here it comes. Where? Where have you two been? Father's fever has grown worse, and we need those popotos for his stew. Forgive us, mother. There are no popotos. They use the last of the coin on uh, honey cakes. On honey cakes. On honey cakes. If the fever takes your father, those cakes might be the last thing you ever eat. I'll have to sell you both off. Uh, the both of you off to the goblins. Anything but that. No, mother. Then you'd best hope that the refuse pile behind the inn turns up something good. <laughs> Whoopsie doodle. Hey, guys, when you go shopping, when your mother tells you to go shopping for and gives you a shopping list, get, get the things on the list. You don't want to get sold to goblins. Hey, St. Raymond's Cathedral. Hey, who's this kid? Lee. 72 articles? Ah, I do remember recall borrowing a volume, which one I can't say. What that I had time to read it. Truth be told, my so-called schoolmates, it kept me rather preoccupied of late. Not a day goes by without them pulling some childish prank on my dear friend Theomason. Well, they try at least. I do what I can to see their plans come to naught, if you catch my meaning. <sighs> I, to know they'll move on to become clergymen, or even prelates, who truly live in an unjust world. Ah, school, man. Pray keep your voice down when inside the scholastic kit. Oh, hey, you got my hairstyle. Let's head into the St. Endolin's scholastic kit. You are studying the 72 articles as well? <sighs> I suppose that makes one of us. I require, vol I require volume four, but it has yet to be returned. It outlines the canon laws of the Ishgard orthodoxy. In truth, these books are all rather dense, especially up to the 11th volume. 
You must memorize the teachings of the fourth to set a foundation for everything that follows. Lee was the last to borrow it, as far as I know. But he's been so busy of late. Something about helping children being bullied? If he is so truly so busy, I wish he would at least return the book to us. Oh, hey, he said he, he borrowed one, so that was the fourth. You find volume 10 on the table, so he's not missing 10. Our combatant. Ha! A lowborn stumbles into the scholastic and thinks herself qualified to study orthodox doctrine. How droll! Our facilities are reserved for those who have potential, like myself. I'll have you know that I'm working through the final volume of the 72 article, so that would be the 14th. A simpleton like you could spend a lifetime in study and still fail to comprehend a single word I expect. But don't let me dissuade you. Start with volume one and mull over the first few pages for a year or so. Look at these little kids! Look at these cuties! Babies! Orthodox doctor. Six is on the shelf. I'm uh, listing for volumes one through nine on the shelf. However, volumes four and six appear to be missing. Well, six was over there. I guess it wasn't um, put on the shelf properly. And what's his name? That one guy, um, Lee, borrowed number four. So one through nine is fine. We have 14 accounted for. Yeah. Uh, oh, here's that Theomacent guy that, that Lee was talking about. Oh, pardon me. The 72 articles? Why, yes, I've been poring over volumes 12 and 13. The subject matter is quite dense. Hardly something that could be handled in a single sitting. If you have the need, I could bear to part with them for a short while. No, I'm just looking for some around here. No? I see. In that case, I shall continue my studies. Hmm. So if 1 through 9 are there... He's looking at 12 and 13, and then the guy at 14, then we are missing 11. Hey! Uh, Jewel Corsier. The, la the little girl mentions, oh, they're very dense up to 11 in a way to get you to make a mistake but don't make a mistake it's number 11 that's missing temple test missing that it has to be volume 11 oh volume 11 yes that's it i remember now Whew. my business and reputation are safe thanks to you as I'm sure you can imagine, falling out of their good graces would bode ill for business. The Scholastic Kid is the cornerstone of education within the church, and all members of the clergy must pass through its doors. With but a word from the headmistress, I could lose everything I own. Or worse. But thanks to you, my dear madame, my business is safe. You've helped me more than you'll ever know. Alright. Mathai? Mathai? Thighs as he looks around for customers. What are you looking for? Oh, my dear miss, how fare you these days? Can't say business has been well myself. As you are aware, the church has been in a bit of a turmoil and it's taking a toll on my profits. Yeah, so that quest to, to talk about the Holonic piety and things, the Holonic polity, was actually available before 3.0 finished. So now, technically, we've gone ahead, defeated Thornton, and we're back now. Taking a toll of my profits. Unrest is understandable, yet there are many who are using the confusion to take their anger out on my best customers. No, I'm not the one to get mixed up in politics, but the students of the Scholastic can play good gill for tomes and feathered quills. One made a request that I'm want to, that I'm want to oblige in order to keep the coin flowing. On behalf of her peers, she told me some disagreeable folk have been following seminarians back to the cathedral, hurling all manner of insults. Easily singled out by their uniforms, they don't feel comfortable walking out in the open these days, and that includes around the crozier. 
If you're inclined to keep an eye on those who would try to harass the students, I'd ask you make a round near the road to St. Ramon's Cathedral. If you see anyone starting trouble, do what adventurers do best. Y you know, break it up. Keep the peace. Look intimidating. Sure. I guess that's what adventurers do. Do they really? Back to the Ethernet Shard. Uh, what am I doing again? Right. Oh, no. There's a person down there. Oh, rip. I should have just walked up. See, this is what you get. If you're not actually looking at where to go. Temple tap. Hey. Oh, it's Theomacent and a spineless seminarian. We understand his grievances, but we are mere students of the Holy Word. Oh, hey, you get, this is the kid who's getting bullied. S sir, can we not discuss this like civilized men? Our lives are hard enough without some fresh-faced seminarian rubbing salt into our wounds. Will your precious words repay us for what we've lost? Will they bring back the dead? No, of course not. But as a pupil of the Scholasticate, I cannot forsake the teachings. If you would give the book back, I am certain I can show you the proper passage to provide succor in your time of- HOW DARE YOU! As if the lies of this book will keep us warm at night! Better destroy it than be destroyed by it! No, Sir! Sir! I can absolutely cannot allow you to take that particular tome! Come back! Is he really going to- Oh no! Mm-hmm. No way, kid! Come back! You're an adventurer, aren't you? Please, will you help my friend get his tome back? We were on our way back to the Scholasticate when that man accosted us. It has become an unfortunate occurrence these days, but this is the first time someone went so far as to make off with one of our books. The Omicent may mean well, but I fear he will get caught up in a lot more trouble if they outnumber him. I'll go and get help. Sounds like a plan. Uh-oh, the Amazon went to the broom. Uh-oh, that's that is, that's dangerous. Kid's gonna get pummeled. Whoop! Oh, hey, Bartholvio. How are you doing? Goodbye. Oh, yeah, thought so. I'm warning you, best not meddle in what you don't know. What's up, the Amazon? You okay there, kid? <gasps> hey, leave him alone. He's just a kid. <sighs> well, what do we have here? Any ideas of what to do with these two, Ben? Ben? Is that you? Oh, my goodness. What are the chances of meeting at a time like this? Please, I would appreciate it if you would ask your friend to produce the tome he has taken from me. Well, well, Theomacent, it's been a while. <gasps> the book! <gasps> Careful now. I was in the mood for some light reading, but if you, you and your friend so much as take a step, your precious tome goes up in smoke. Ah, the parables of St. Danifin. I know this title. It's the one we were read to as children. I recall Father Chasseau gave you his own copy before you left the broom for your higher learning. Then you must know how much it means to me. I made a promise to him to keep its lessons dear to my heart, and I have kept it with me ever since. All the more reason to burn it, then. Scatter the ashes and your dreams along with them. Oh, <gasps> wiggly eyes. He taught us three the same. Why was I left to rot in that ri this wretched place? Why not you or Lee? What made you two so bloody special? <gasps> Speaking of Lee, put the book down, Ben, or I'll see you burned as well. <sighs> of all the people. Best watch yourselves. The world is changing. We won't listen to your lies anymore. We'll make sure of that. <gasps> the book! Ah! <gasps> Lee! Oh! 
Good job. Smother it. Smother the fire. Oh! Sacrilegious bastard! It's been badly charred. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid you won't make much of it now. Oh, sweetheart. Ah. Mm -hmm. Worry not, Lee. I've already committed the entire text to heart. I'm just happy it has been returned to me. <laughs> Typical. You shouldn't let him you shouldn't have let him off the hook so easily, you know. Were it not were it not that I pity him, I'd handed him over to the Inquisitors without a second thought. Uh, you can you 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 came to help me, yes? Were it not for you, I am certain they would have turned their hatred towards me soon after. I wish I could pay you for your services, but I am afraid I live on but a meager stipend, hardly enough for candles and ink. But if you would be so kind as to tell me your name? It's me, I'm Colossa Whispersong. <laughs> Bow. Little prayer. Madam Whispersong, I am sincerely grateful to you for your protection. I may not have much in the way of coin, but if you are ever in need of spiritual enlightenment, then you need no look further than the cathedral. Holone's blessings be upon you. Thanks, kid, but, um, <laughs> Hello and Han Minfina aren't really on, uh, it's, it's, uh, on good terms, shall we say? It's nice of you, though. Have a good day, kids. What does one do with a smoldering tome of parables? Will they struggle to abide the lessons of its now blackened words, or rise from its ashes? This answer I eagerly await. <gasps> Who could this mysterious character be? I don't know, it's a mystery. Oh, back to the jewel crozier. Boing. Uh, Jewel Crozier. Jewel Crozier. It's the Jewel Crozier. You can buy lots. Jules Crozier. Hey, oh, there's a lady here. Oh, thank goodness, it's just an adventurer. I beg your pardon, but with all the violence in the streets, I find myself all too wary of those who approach me. Oh, no, sorry. Shouldn't have just run up and jumped on the boxes. You've returned, and not a moment too soon. The students seem less anxious, and business has nearly returned to normal. I presume you found who has been harassing them. Oh, dear, not again. Where are the patrols when they're needed? They've been spread too thin from what I hear. Fortunately, this lady has been willing to lend a hand. I thank you for looking out for the well-being of our pupils. I am Sister Gatel of St. Endelim's Scholasticate. And might I ask your... Uh, oh dear, I know your face. You are Madame Whispersong, the one who had a hand in revealing the true history of the Holy See. Mm-hmm, that's me. What? By the... You mean to tell me I've been asking THE Madam Whispersong as my errand girl? And you accepted it with such grace? Colone herself could not have arranged a more curious encounter. On the contrary, I believe our meeting is the product of intervention most divine. Madam Whispersong, if you would be so inclined, I would like to take you to the... to meet the headmistress of our humble scholasticate. Eh? By old deeds was light shed on certain inconsistencies in Ishgard's history, and, to a lesser extent, the church's teachings. Needless to say, the resulting controversy has strained the relationship between the people and the clergy. The foundation of our great city-state rests upon the wisdom of the Incaridian. Alas, the lowborn in particular have suffered greatly as a result of erroneous interpretations. Some have even begun to wonder if all of our precepts have been thus distorted. We have 
of the Scholasticate are wont, wont to reflect upon those revelations deeper than most. Although we live as scholars, we have grown complacent, accepting a single interpretation set forth by the Archbishop and his predecessors. Oh yeah, the Archbishops who were terrible people. Got it. Although we are openly reevaluating our teachings, our students continue to be targeted by those who feel they have been deceived. As you yourself have no doubt seen, there are those who would rather purge the city of all clergy, regardless of their guilt. Bow. But with you on our side, surely those miscreants would think twice before harming our students. Pray come and visit our halls. I'm certain the students would be put at ease to see you again as well. Sounds like a plan. Just as you don't just as long as you don't mind my my earring worshipping Minfina. What the? That's a familiar glasses guy. I must take my leave and return to the cathedral. Mass I, it's been a pleasure. B Madam Whispersong, I sincerely hope you shall consider my offer to meet with the headmistress. Halone's blessings be upon you both. Shoo! Back. used to going to the last vigil to head to Fort Holm Manor that like I don't know any of the others. It's either Forgotten Night to talk with Amaric or Fort Holm Manor at the last vigil. That's it. That, I never use any others. Madame Whispersong, yes. Sister Gatel was hoping you, hopeful you would come and visit. She awaits you inside. Let's head in then. Oh, it's Jean Chet again. Oh, and there's the Amazon! My baby! Madam Whispersong, it seems Helone has answered my prayer that you would visit our halls. Oh, baby, you prayed that I'd come and hang out? That's adorable. John Shet. To think that we are, th that there are those who would sully the reputation of the church. Meanwhile, I can do aught but spend countless hours poring over these books. I still have much to learn of the doctrine, this is true, but the clergy will not be subject to suspicion or ridicule after I take the cloth. Fury take me, what, must we, we revise the entire curriculum? What do you do here? Though I still do teach on occasion, my primary responsibilities are now administrative, as I serve directly under Headmistress Elvian. Her knowledge of the Enchiridion is without peer, and it is well that his eminence appointed her to oversee the Scholasticate. However, owing to her age, she is unable to attend to all of her duties. Her absence is most felt most keenly in these chaotic times, when we must reevaluate the veracity of our entire doctrine. When seminarians and clergy dare not travel unescorted for fear of coming into harm. <sighs> By the fury, where in the hells has my nephew got to? That was a weird, like, eye eyeglasses thing. Pushing up. Pushing up his eyeglasses. Madam Whispersong, welcome to the Scholasticate. I appreciate you coming all this way, but I'm afraid that his mistress is not here at the moment. She has taken leave to rest. Forgive me, but I must ask that you wait to... Oh, that you meet with her another day. It is truly a pity, as I too was looking forward to her audience with you. Allow me to formally introduce myself. I am Father Bruvagnon. I have heard much about you from Sister Gatel. In the headmistress's absence, I have been charged with tending to myriad administrative matters. While that would ordinarily constitute a simply waxing the seal to a pile of parchments, I have been forced to take a more hands-on approach. The deputy head minister, headmaster and I were just discussing a rather troubling event which occurred soon after our students encounter with the broom, and we fear it may be connected. What was that? <gasps> Madam 
Madame Whispersong, you are familiar with the statue of St. Valeron, the one in the center of the forum. House the Miles stonemasons have been working on chiseling a new head, and one of our students has been tasked with overseeing their work. Unfortunately, this student has since reported that the piece has vanished from the artisan's workshop. Given that it has little monetary value, Father Bruv Bruvagnon and I cannot help but wonder if... Hmm... If the culprit bears a grudge toward his student, Briardian, consulting inspector at your service. Hey, Inspector Briardian. Hello, Colosa. What? <laughs> Colosa, what brings you here of all places? Ah, don't tell me. You were the hero that the students have been murmuring about. Cannot say I'm surprised. You're acquainted with my nephew, Madam Whispersong. <gasps> Nephew? Yes, mine uncle. You could say our paths have crossed more than once. Indeed. An idea occurs to me. Colossa is an adventurer of exceptional skill in combat and deduction both. Pray allow me to appoint her as my assistant. No, associate in my work here at the Scholastic. Oh, man. I got bumped up. Associate. Nice. Prolonged association is like to raise more than a few eyebrows, if not invite criticism. While I understand your concern, I am willing to trust Biardian's judgment. Madam Whispersong has shown nothing but compassion towards our students. At least permit me her company in ascertaining the piece's whereabouts. You may judge the value of our association afterwards. Uh, uh, very well. But no one is to speak of this to the headmistress. I will allow Madame Whispersong to accompany you, but only for the duration of the investigation. And for the love of the fury, be discreet. Mm -hmm. Co excellent. Come, Colosa. Our first course of action will be to question the student responsible for overseeing the statue's restoration. Mm -hmm. She. <laughs> Oh yeah, stay related. <laughs> Who could it be? You know, I should have known it was the Amazon. Hmm, certain white pum pumice dust. We have our boy. Yo, the Amazon. How you doing, kid? Madam Whispersong. A pleasant surprise to see you once more. Praise be to Halone. Have you heard anything? So you are asking after the statue piece. I made sure to lock the workshop door, so I don't understand how it could have been taken. But worry not, I take full responsibility and will personally see it returned. That won't be necessary. Inspector Briardian at your service. I'm told you were recently harassed by several ruffians in the broom, and I suspect they may be responsible for this theft. What can you tell me about these men? Uh, nothing, Inspector. I had never seen them before in my life. And besides, why would they want to steal the statue piece? It makes no sense. In any event, as I said, the responsibility is mine and mine alone. Now, if you will excuse me. Wait a minute. Admirable sense of responsibility notwithstanding. He's clearly hiding something. He really is. He knows Ben. Closer, I think we may find our answers in Foundation. While I make inquiries in the broom, I ask that you keep an eye on the forum. Many miscreants are wont to delight in their misdeeds, and this one may be drawn to the statue. Mm-hmm. You got it. Let's split up, gang! told you. It's either that one or it was either Forgotten Night or Last Vigil. Every time. 
Hey, I should have known. Hey, Ben. You again? Told you not to meddle in my affairs. Away with you! Uh oh. You get me into now, kid. Not a whisper song. How did you. <sighs> I suppose I should be honest with you. I am certain the stolen piece is in that crate. I know you are helping the inspector, but I beg you, please let me try to reason with Ben first. Mm hmm. Go ahead, kid. Ben, please return the statue piece and all will be forgiven. You do understand the consequences of what you are doing. Defiling a saint's monument is a serious crime. When Father Chasseau read us stories at the orphanage, you loved the ones about Saint Valeron. Do you not wish to see the statue restored? Saint Valeron, an Azure Dragoon who drew the Great Worm away from Ishgard. For all we know, that too was a lie. The Holy See and the bloody Eyeborn deceived us, Theo. They built their fortunes on our backs. But you willingly believe those lies if it meant a better chance at l a chance at a better life for just yourself. Uh. <sighs> and Lee just running up. I knew you were the one behind this. You've been following Theo and me ever since we met in the broom. I love Theo. <sighs> Careful, Closer. He's not going to give it up without a fight. There we go. Wait, all of you. I still believe Ben will do what's right. There you go again. Turn it up your nose and spew and shite as if you're one of them. Don't you see? I am doing what's right. I'm ridden off us of these false heroes. Bah! Keep your bloody head and your library and lessons filled with lies. Believe them if you want. You're just as bad as the rest. Wait! right to be angry. I dreamt of teaching our people to walk in Helone's grace, but when the scripture itself has been called into question, how am I to find my way? Whatever should I do? You should forge your own path, kid. Uh, mm -hmm. My own path? You mean, interpret the scripture on my own? A different approach to our faith, but mayhap you have the right of it. Forgive me, Ben, but I've come too far to give up now. If Halone's teachings have been distorted by man's hand, then by man's hand must they be redeemed. Heck yeah! Good job, Theomacent. That's all well and good, but it won't change Ishgard by standing around in the snow. At least Ben left us a statue piece. We'd best return it before that prize peacock starts squawking to the deputy headmaster. Of course. You come too close up, pretty sure it'll appreciate your help in retrieving it. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah, someone, uh, no, what was it? Oh, gub, glug, 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 glug. Sea Book. Sea Book was asking if the Moogle was an actual Moogle. It's a little hard to see, but yes, it is. The pom pom is just close to its head, so it's a little difficult to notice. There you go. It is a little Moogle. It's an actual Moogle. But he's not Mog. He's just a Moogle. He's just a Moogly Googly. Uh, heading back to Bruvagnon, back at St. Ramon's Cathedral. There we go. Sprint! Pray keep your voice down when it's got inside the Scholastic Kit, and no running. Okay, fine. Hey, sucker! already explained everything. We recovered the statue piece, and that's what matters. Well, that's... that is that. All's well that ends well, yes? Hey, hey, Briardian. I see you found the boy and the missing statue piece. Care to share with us the details? Mm -hmm. 
Bow. Madam Whispersong, I see you've returned as well. Lee and Theomason have just finished explaining to me what happened. I thank you for your help in resolving this matter swiftly. Ching! But there appears to be something amiss. Colossa, pray tell, what became of the suspect? Surely these two wish to seek justice for the theft. Uh-oh. Theomason? Those two will tell you not, Inspector, for they are the culprits whom you seek. What? <gasps> ah, my book. Ah. <laughs> Allow me to shed some light on this troubling situation. As a son of House Zamail, it pained me to learn that our artisan's precious work had been spirited away. So I sought fit to conduct my own investigation. I followed Lee at a distance, only to find him and his friend consorting with the culprit. What? <laughs> Camaraderie among orphans in the broom is to be expected. But to steal a saint's head so that they may retrieve it to prove their merit. <laughs> In such desperation that they would desecrate a tome in this manner. You would expect a seminarian to treat any holy text with the utmost care, even if they are but children's stories. They were taking care of it, even though it got burnt it. Don't be mean. Piss off, you priggish whore! Son, Closer was there. She'll tell you you're wrong. Enough! You will all conduct yourselves with decorum as befit seminarians. Lee, we will discuss penance for your foul language and all. <laughs> Ripley! Don't curse in the church. <laughs> Father Bruva, Gnon, if I may. The next time the scholastic, uh, proper, apportions pr work with the sacred monuments, pray and trust the task to me. I am certain the artisans of my house will be at ease knowing their work is in cleaner, more dependable hands. <laughs> As for my ignoble peers, if the comprehension of advanced scripture is still beyond you, such that you require a tattered tome of children's lessons, then allow me to procure for you a new copy with mine own coin. You need not thank me. How Zamile prides itself on its charity to be to the deprived. Ah! Uh, wait, my tome! If you all go, here. Just how long are you planning to lie there? Uh? Girls! Uh, you're completely hopeless. Uh? Um, uh? Uh? It's just, um, here you are. Thank you, Blaze. <laughs> the purest smile! Oh! Ha! Dunk! Huh? when you let them walk all over you. It'll be a miracle if we're not branded heretics by the end of this term. Ugh! Lee, Theomacent, consider this a warning. You were saved this time solely by Madame Whispersong's integrity and the grace of the Fiori. But I will not turn a blind eye if you continue to fraternize with questionable company. Uh, of course. Yeah, yeah.
Oh, the insurmountable wall between highborn and lowborn. I wonder, did our ancestors build it brick by brick? Or was it fate which drove us apart? And where shall we go from here? Who, who is this mysterious person? Is this the big green? Excellent work, Colossa. I had no doubts that you would rise to the challenge. Madam Whispersong, I must apologize for the behavior of my students. They have been at each other's throats since the revelations came to light. As for your performance, you have surpassed my expectations, and I will allow you to assist Briardian in his work at the Scholasticate. Well done. For may be so bold, Uncle. Though I have but arrived, and this is only the only case you had me investigate thus far, I must say I found it rather a waste of my talents. While theft is indeed a serious matter, I cannot help but wonder if this was merely some pretense. Surely you have a more pressing problem. An astute observation, nephew. I expected nothing less. There is indeed another matter I should discuss with you and your newly appointed associate. Well then, tell us what's going on, my sir. I had better start from the beginning. It would not do to involve Madame Whispersong with our affairs without first ensuring she possesses a proper understanding of how our seminary functions and how we have been forced to change. You see, most men and women of the cloth go on living fulfilling lives as pastors, academics, and poets. However, those who graduate from the Scholasticate with the highest marks have been given an opportunity to serve the vault and perhaps one day rise to prominence. The stakes are quite high for those who seek such prestige, for they know full well that their academic performance may determine their future. It is they who strive for the top three seats that are granted the Scholasticate's official endorsement. The Trinity. Hey, let's make more Christian uh, stuff. And so those who wish to guide Ishgard's faithful spend their days culminating marks through academic pursuits, while at the same time honing their skills to persuade others to share their interpretations of the scripture. Up until now, it resulted in no more than the occasional lively debate, for the Holy See was ultimately responsible for dictating doctrine. Ranking was naturally determined by one's familiarity with said doctrine. However, in light of recent events, that is no longer an option. Simply put, we cannot currently assess their academic performance in the traditional manner as a significant portion of the curriculum has been called into question. As a result, we have been forced to consider more mm, subjective methods. And in this time of uncertainty, students are wont to lash out at their peers, whom they fear will exploit this interim change the system to their advantage. Distressing, I suppose, but what does that have to do with us? I require your unparalleled skills of observation and deduction. How so, sir? The only way to put an end to this bickering between students is to ensure, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that our interim evaluations are conducted in a fair and equitable manner. I ask that you stand as an observer. Until a new curriculum is decided, our evaluation system is vulnerable. In other words, you want us to catch the cheaters. Hmm. <laughs> Precisely. Now then, I have received word that the headmistress has returned to her office in the cathedral. I would ask, ask that you introduce yourselves. <laughs> but there is something you should keep in mind when speaking with headmistress El Elvian. She was appointed to her position by the former archbishop. Thus, her views on the curriculum are quite traditional. I would advise you to discuss matters regarding the Holy See with utmost care. Mm-hmm. I know better than to just prattle on about other people's stuff. Woo! Off we go. We need to balance the spear. And by her spear... And by the balance of her spear were met all men set free. You won't understand that just yet, doopa doop. Although Uncle said we should speak with care, we would be remiss in our duties if we refrained from asking difficult questions. I trust you agree. I'll let you say them then. We have been expecting you. The headmistress awaits you within.
and Mistress Elva, El yeah, Elvian. I've had the pleasure of introducing the individuals who will be in charge of keeping order at the Scholasticate. This is Consulting Inspector Briardian and his associate, Calosa Whispersong. Hello, Sir Whispersong. I must say, Father Bruvagnon, your selections are rather <laughs> appropriate. <laughs> we thank you both for your service in our time of need. I trust that Father Bruvagnon has briefed you on our humble seminary. St. Endelim's Scholasticate has produced Ishgard's finest clergy for centuries, including countless men and women who have served in the highest echelons of the Holy See. All of whom were spared a brutal death on the battlefield in service to a misguided war they perpetrated, or some might be given to say. Oof, cut it right to the quick. Indeed, some might, and they would not be entirely mistaken, for while we were wholly unaware of the deception perpetuated by the archbishops, we did unwittingly sustain it, for to our sorrow. The idea that we willingly subjected the, them to false precepts is, of course, preposterous, a contrived fantasy. Nevertheless, some fervently believe it true, and these selfsame individuals have come to our attention and, as students and students as targets for their misguided anger. It is of paramount importance that we restore faith in the teachings. Yet how are we to regain the trust of the common man when our own seminarians are embroiled in childish conflicts? Hmm. Ching. You refer to the tension regarding the interim evaluation system. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, it is but one facet. Classes have also been suspended until we complete our own painstaking review of the curriculum. Some students have taken leave, while the other more dedicated have taken it upon themselves to conduct independent work to demonstrate their merits. That sounds like the Amacent. We cannot allow this situation to continue indefinitely. Graduation is approaching and we must make our recommendations, but the senior class is divided. They don't know not how they will be evaluated. Hmm. Rather, they understand how they will be evaluated, but have no faith that our methods will produce a fair result. A concern not without merit, I must confess. I too suspect that they that some may be driven to manipulate the interim system to their advantage. I expect some have already tried, but that is why we have brought in outside observers. Inspector Briardian, Colossa Whispersong, if anyone is engaging in unscrupulous behavior, I would have it brought to an end at once. May the fury guide you in your task. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Obow. Hey, Alderaan, hope your bath was nice. Surely one who desires to join the clergy should not be foolish enough to stoop to such behavior. The Fury knows all and sees all. Yeah, well, some people don't actually believe in the Fury, even though they're learning here. I'm sorry. So the headmistress also thinks some of the students have attempted to cheat. Saturnoi, huh? Now then, before we proceed, might you both tell us a little about your students, Father? My apologies, I am Father Satunoi. In addition to teaching the fundamentals of Hellenic polity, I also foresee fundraising for the stipends of underprivileged students. Oh, so this guy, this guy is the person who helps the Amacent and Lee out. Well, I would like to help you. I think my opinion would not do them justice. I would suggest getting to know them yourselves. I feel the same. The way in which pupils speak in front of their instructors is not the same as amongst themselves. In my ten years of counseling, they have minded their etiquette and are not but cordial to me. However, I can recommend one of my students who is quite vocal. May I have you could try speaking with the dormitory prefect, Arcombadin. Given his closeness to the students' social affairs, he may be able to give you insight into what they talk about. Or Combadin. Ah, yes, the silver haired boy. House of, son of Houses of Mile, as I recall. We shall heed your suggestion, Sister Gatel, given his duty and status. Mm hmm. Let's 
Let's do it. Sorry. Sorry, hey Alteron, I hope you got that. Like, hello. Hi. Maybe you didn't. Uh, oh, there they are. So Lee's lackey is helping the inspector now. Well, I have little interest in noble bloodlines. I am not unfamiliar with the Count de Zemile's sons. Has no one ever told you that brandishing weapons is frowned upon in places of enlightenment? That is, unless Lee sent you to stir up more trouble. Rest assured that my associate inspector draws her armaments only to resolve, un resolve troublesome situations, not create them. We merely came to ask of your well-being and your expectations for the future. Under the auspices of the headmistress, I am sure... Very well. I, Le Bressois de Bonfort of House, po of House Bonfort, in service to House Zemile, present to you our Combatin de Zemile. As prefix for the Scholastic Dormitory, we are responsible for keeping the peace between our fellow seminarians. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are you not the foreigner who went to rather great lengths to expose the Archbishop's falsehoods, responsible for the reevaluation of the entire curriculum? That's me! Quite the resolution, that. And for what? Every great nation's history is marred by the sins of the past. Olamigo, Ulda, Limsa Liminsa, please! Each was built on the foundation of lies and blood. Funny you didn't mention Gridania. Oh, snap! Which is not to say we elites should not learn from these mistakes, but we who have served as shepherds of the people for a thousand years have a duty to maintain order through the preservation of tradition. Would a Wainwright cast aside his father's best cart when it has but a broken wheel? Indeed, our combatant and I have said so much to those who support a more radical approach. The last thing we need is young seminarians running about crying for reformation. I see. So you both have been quite active in convincing the other students to see things your way. How have you fared? It is hardly a daunting task. Many see comfort in consistency. Sister Gatel has tasked us with bringing back the students who took leave. Why not let the, our results determine how persuasive we are? I thank you, gentlemen, for your cooperation and wish you the best of luck with your efforts. Now then, Colosa, if these students are bringing back their true aunt's peers, there must be others who are doing the same. Let us split up and seek out the participants. Sounds like a plan. How are you doing, Alteron? Maybe is my thing working? I don't know. Maybe chat isn't working. Nope, it's it's working. Hi. Yeah, I don't know. Weird. Not a big problem. Yes! Cramavoir. <gasps> you came to hear Cramavoir speak? The wisdom of a scholar with the soul of a poet. When he recites scripture, I just... <sighs> can't you... Can't you talk with him another time? I finally got his attention, and I'd rather not you interrupt. I'd rather you not interrupt. A new exotic flower graces us with her presence today. Well met, my dear. Mwah. And what am I? Chopped the liver? <sighs> He was looking at me till you showed up. Yeah, it's because I'm hot. We're just asking if you're looking for more people to join. Oh, I see. So you are helping, Inspector Briardian. Pleasure to meet you. I am Cramavoir de Montigny, but you may address me simply by my first name. So it brings you to the pillars. Could it be you are to observe how we go about convincing truant seminarians to return? Then by all means, let me show you how it's done. Mm-hmm. 
I must admit, I find many of the other students rather intimidating, but thanks to Cramavois, I am considering returning to the Scholasticate to resume my studies. We were just discussing the responsibility the highborn have to redress the imbalance. Of the Fury's love will all men receive, and by the balance of her spear will all be set free. So it is written in volume 11 of the 72 articles of Hellenic Polity. Oh yeah, we were, they were trying to get a new book for that. Equal under her ever watchful gaze. Ah, but that you graced our halls with your presence one more, that I might favor you with mine own gaze. I fondly recall seeing your lovely face always buried in that tome. Oh, Cramavois, you did notice. I thought to pen a lengthy treatise on it, but I could not make do once the volume vanished. Oh, so you helped Mathai by searching for that tome. With how relevant the content has become these days, I suppose it is not surprising it would go missing. In it. In any event, you've convinced me. I will gather my things and return to the dormitory straight away. Yay, you got one, kid. Yes, that is the way. One must seize the moment and act upon one's convictions. Life is but a fleeting, fragile thing. Wouldn't you agree, my dear? Oh, indeed. Well, I've done my part in guiding a little lamb back to the flock, and now to celebrate with a well-deserved nap. I bid you both a farewell. Mm-hmm. Weird. There's another one over here in the markets. Anyone around here? Oh, it's the kids again. Mother's asked for us to fetch mutton and papotos. Right, but she didn't say we couldn't buy any. Yeah. She didn't ask us to buy honey cakes, but she didn't say we couldn't get any honey cakes. Close, it's good to see you. Fighting the good fight lately? Oh, hello, Closa. Lee and I were just about to visit our friends at Foundation and try to convince them to return to their studies. It's been difficult since we aren't exactly held in high regard right now. Dormitory prefects have made sure of that. We must do all in our power to motivate our friends to come back to the Scholasticate. Then we can strive for high marks together. Right, and then we can convince our peers that we're just as worthy as any highborn in the clergy, and they'll welcome us with open arms, and all will be well in Ishgard. <sighs> if our combatant and his cronies receive the Scholasticate's endorsement, no one will ever listen to us. We can't let them take the Trinity. I would rather not think of it that way, Lee. Let us just focus on bringing back as many people as we can. Well, that's how the highborn are thinking about it. The more vocal we become, the more they see us as a threat. That's why we have to stick together. Thanks for walking through me, Lee. Keep your voice down when inside the Scholasticate. Hey, everyone's here. Oh, Blasey. All of these people are making me nervous. I mean, I was not able to bring anyone back, so I'm not even part of the competition. But even so, I hope that Theo did well. Oof, this kid's got it bad. With all the young women returning, mayhap I'll have more incentive to linger in the library. But I do not see Ula. Curious about the result. I can't imagine why. I see no reason to expect anything surprising. Whoa, that was a yawn. Hello. 
If our performance is to be taken into account for the final rankings, then I must say our combatant and I have nothing to worry about. Oh, that was Lepiswa, sorry, our combatant is here. After reviewing the preliminary numbers at my dormitory, I am looking forward to the results. Dormitory Rat has quite the smile on his face. Could it be that he was able to gather more students than us? Well, I did everything that I could. And even if I did not guide them all myself, I'm glad that so many of our peers have come back. Look at this sweet, tiny cinnamon roll. We shall announce the results anon. It would seem that our combatant and Lebesois had quite the advantage, given their experience managing the dormitory. Right then, let us see how competitive these students truly are. It brings me joy to see so many of our brothers and sisters return to the Scholasticate. Sister Gatel, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Thank you, our competent. I will now announce how many of our stray sheep each student persuaded to come home. <laughs> Both Yamasen and Lee were able to bring back one student each. Jen Chet guided two back into our arms. I love it. She's clapping for him. Our combatant and Lebesois were able, each able to convince three students to return, and most of all, mo the most of all, excellent work, all of you. Wait a minute. Cramavois. What about the student Cramavois convinced to return? What was it? That smiling girl, Ula, or whatever. Oh, is this true? Are we missing someone from the Count? The girl you speak of has formally withdrawn from the Scholasticate. Apparently, she was not at all that enthusiastic about returning as she led Cramavoir to believe you. Perhaps she chose to play along so that he would cease his harassment. Perhaps it is for the best. She rarely engaged her fellow students, instead choosing to sit alone and read the articles of Hellonic polity. Given the recent revelations, I suspect she has become disillusioned with her fate. Strange you would say that, Lebesois. When last I spoke with her, Ula was quite interested in Volume 11's Equal Under Her Ever Watchful Gaze passage, one that you and your master would sooner pretend did not exist. If she were the victim of harassment, I expect it was at your hands. Yadam, are you implying that we had something to do with it because we did not share her views? What rot! You dishonor yourself and your house with such baseless accusations. Rather you would if aught remained of your house to dishonor. Oh, snap. I yield, good sir, I yield. I lack the qualities the honorable lord our combatant possesses, which enable him to deliver such ob observations. Well, if Ula is withdrawn, then I shall mourn her departure by walking through the dormitory halls reciting ep Excerpts from volume 11. Hmm, sounds... How do you intend to do that? Volume 11 of the Articles of Halonic Polity have been missing for some time now. <sighs> the tomes themselves are inconsequential if one has taken the words to heart. How fortunate we are that we are that the wisdom of our forebears is not so easily forgotten. Would you not agree? Looks like Cramavoir has, uh, uh it can, we can find a friend in him. Such impudence as befits a sixth son. For all his failings, his father was wise to send him away. Oh, 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 oh. At any rate, we are blessed that this handful of truants have returned to us. Truly, it is the... Fury's will that we overcome these trials and tribulations and move forward with a singular vision for the future.
A student with a keen interest in a controversial precept who withdraws without explanation. This seems rather odd to me as well. Mayhap it is worthy of our attention. Hmm. If there was a kidnapping, that's no good. More than meets her eye. Cram evo. More than meets the eye. Colosa, were you present when Kramavaw spoke with Ula? I was definitely there. She was like, I'm going to go grab my stuff and head straight to the dormitories. So she was indeed enthusiastic about returning to the Scholasticate. Then why did she insist to... to why did she instead decide to withdraw? Kramavaw all but accused our combatant of having a hand in it, as well as the disappearance of this Volume 11. Not more than slander spoken in anger, perhaps, but the situation does merit further investigation. We look forward to your results, Inspector. Mistress Whispersong, if I might have a word with you in private, pray meet me near the plaza in front of St. Raymond's Cathedral. Sounds good! Oh, hey, Jean Chet. I have no interest in this short sighted squabble over seat ranking. It's only natural people would try and take advantage of an unfortunate situation. Find a way to atone for the distortions of truth and guide the people back to the faith in a peaceful manner. This is what I will focus my efforts on. Oh, here's Blasey. I'm sure you're always wondering why I stare at the Amasin. He always seems so confident, so I thought maybe I could learn from him. I don't really have any outstanding talents, and I get discouraged easily. But when he's around, I feel more positive about what I can accomplish. Oh man, kids got what? The Amazon's got Lee always around him, and Blazy's always talking about him. Dude's like a regular harem protagonist. Kremovol can say what he pleases, yet it does not mean it is the truth. In a state of confusion, even blatant lies can seem like rational thought to the desperate. Faith in the church must be restored, not through word, but virtuous deed. Is that not what we seminarians should consider determining the, in the future? I am considering ways to alleviate animosity and unite the seminarians of the Scholasticate, yet it is a daunting task. It is always easier to fuel the flames than to put the fire out, but there are some who are clearly provoking my peers. Some people just want to watch the world burn. in front of it. There they are. Oh, hey! The Amazon's here, too. Enli. Uh, our combatant and Lebesois are truly impressive. That they were able to bring back the most students to the Scholasticate. They surely have a way with words. Oh, would that I had such skill. Theo can be so thick-headed sometimes. He doesn't realize that all those students our competent and Lebesois brought back will make our lives a living hell. At least Father Saturnoy understands the stakes. Thank you for coming, Mistress Whispersong. You are already acquainted with my two best students, the Amacent and Lee. Yeah, hey! They have sought my counsel in their quest to obtain the Trinity seats, and I have been and I have been more than willing to oblige them out of a desire to ensure that all students are given an equal opportunity. I'm not blind to the machinations of our highborn students, after all. I know not what our combatant and Lebesois have said to you, but I advise you to weigh it carefully. You witnessed their treatment of a fellow highborn student, did you not? Then it should come as no surprise that they regard their lowborn peers far more harshly, discriminating against them with whatever means at their disposal. Those who believe that less fortunate students lack the potential to become great clergymen. But if the Amacent and Lee can obtain the highest marks and secure their places within the Trinity through their hard work and virtue, then these misguided beliefs will be proven wrong. Even if we were to succeed, what difference would it make? 
The, those who disagree will not be easily swayed, and those who sympathize will be reluctant to speak, reluctant to speak out for fear of reprisal. Then you must find allies who are fearless, who do not flinch in the face of threats. Mistress Whispersong, have you come across any who fit that description? Hmm. You mean the guy who was shouting out that he'll talk about equality for everyone? You mean that guy? What about Cramivoire? I thought so as well. He seems to treat everyone the same, and he defended Ula's honor at the assembly. Well, I born Lutcher, who skips out on sessions and can't even stay awake for the ones he attends. They are you daft. If he did decide to help us, I wouldn't even want it. No need to dismiss him out of hand, me. As the Amis had said, he spoke out openly against our combatant and Le Bessois on behalf of Ula. He might be willing to do the same for you two. Absolutely not. I don't trust any of the Highborn. Look, I'll help you with finding others, but you're on your own with Cramavoir. Very well, Mistress Whispersong. Will you accompany Theomacent? One cannot be too careful, especially with the rise of assaults on the clergy. Mm hmm Thank you. I'm certain we can find him in the pillars, in his usual spot. Yeah. I'm walking slower, slightly, so that I give my throat a rest. I might have to split this up, I really don't want to. You need more than an endorsement to enter the seminary, you know. These two are thinking about joining it as well. Well, I appreciate a scholarly debate as much as anyone. Your bespectacled friend does not seem to understand that this is neither the time nor the place. I was so close. I'm not going to get anywhere at this rate. I thought he would be more receptive to my appeal, but instead he seems rather annoyed. Can't you and Freckles see we're busy? Leave us be. Freckles, you certainly have a way with words, my dear. She is quite right, you know. We have more pressing matters to attend to. Grandma, please, will you not here help our cause? I believe us to be like-minded individuals, those who desire a new path for the church, one based on principles of... <laughs> You're so earnest and forthright. How adorable. I can hardly resist pinching those soft, supple cheeks. Oh my gosh, I want to pinch his cheeks too. He's so adorable. Oh, for the love of... Come, darling. Let us go somewhere that avoids us privacy. Hmm, an offer that I dare not refuse. Good luck with uh, whatever it is you're about, Freckles. He's gone. No, I cannot give up. The future of the church depends on us. I was not given an opportunity to explain in full, so I will not leave his side until he hears me out. Oh my goodness. He's already given you a nickname, Fiamma said. You've got three people out after you now. And now you're not gonna leave his side? Oh man. I'm telling you, harem protagonist. This kid, this kid is a harem protagonist. And ironically enough, this is probably like the most anime part of like all of Final Fantasy XIV. It's hilarious. What? Wait, what? Uh, this is, uh, this is not what you think. Yeah, I wonder. Ah, oh, we persistent. If your value is life, I suggest you listen to me this time and leave us be. Ah. Oh, no, let's not get too hasty. I'm sure we can resolve this matter peacefully. Agreed. So long as you don't try something stupid and give me a cause to cut his throat. Did I not tell you I was preoccupied? You there, 
take freckles and get out of here. No! Crab of all! Lease him at once or I'll summon the watch! Don't you dare. The affairs of House Matt Kearney are none of your concern. She demands recommence, and rightly so. If I must pay with my life, then so be it. I won't allow it! Oh, do not look so glum. If, you, if I must look upon your freckled face before I ascend to Halone's halls, would rather you favored me with a smile or some such. Father's sins are mine to bear now, mine alone to answer for. Mayhap in death our house may be at last redeemed. If it is recommends you desire, then you shall have it, but not with his life. Uh. The Fury forgives not those who kill their fellow man for wanton purpose. Permit him to address your grievances with coin, and you may have your justice without sin. Furthermore, I offer myself to you as a hostage in his place, that he might be free to secure sufficient ransom. Huh? You've gone quite mad. I told you, this is none of your... I will not abandon such a pious soul, one who shares my desire to make the world a better place. Huh? We are not so different, Cramavois. We have the chance to make amends for the sins of our fathers, to make Ishgard whole again. I cannot do it without you. Uh. <laughs> you really are something else. Making a bloody speech about changing the world at a time like this. I offer the wealth of House Markinani as ransom. If the lady agrees to these terms, then I will go and retrieve it at once. Yes. <laughs> I'll take her silence as a yes. Now then, come. I've always wanted to tie someone up. <laughs> And the Amasant just shoo, straight over his head. Tiny baby! You need not worry about me. I promise I won't move an ilm. I can't believe I agree to this. You had better hope that no one walks this way, or else your friend will have to pay the price, understand? We will travel to my father's old estates in the Western Highlands to retrieve your ransom. I presume you will wait there until I return? For now. If you don't come back quickly and with a great deal of money besides, this one's life is forfeit. Is that clear? Quite. As for you, Freckles, do not do anything reckless. Mistress Whispersong, I must ask that you come with me. We're not due to go through all this trouble, only to be waylaid by bandits on my way back. Let us make wait haste. We aren't so different, you and I. Except much less threatening. He is a tiny baby. Don't be mean to him. Don't be mean to my son. I love Theomacent. Theomacent is my absolute bestest child. Also, hey, Alteron. Nice to see you back. Winky face. This is hilarious. This is actually faster to go this way. Because, see, we're actually supposed to go, like, right there. Over in that direction. No! No, way, go back! Once I get to a point where I can drop... There's a S rank here? No, maybe it wasn't the faster way. Oh well, let's use a chocobo, I don't care. I was hoping I could slightly go over, but nope. Come on, come on. What? I'm over a thing. No, I'm not. There I am. Gosh darn it. It was not faster. Welcome to my life. It is not faster. We are all super tired, let's be honest. I'm just gonna have to use this one for now. Even though technically it's a little far behind when we were supposed to be. Oh well. There you go. Too bad. Too bad. As we do have to fight someone here, which is stupid. 
forgive me, my family's fortune is buried not far from here. But I, I would rather retrieve it alone. Pray remain here a moment and keep watch for bandits and wild beasts. I am watching for bandits and wild beasts. Oh no, bandits and wild beasts! Not anymore. There we go. You didn't see it as you didn't see it so much. So there you go. Yeah, it was the porter chocobo. I was hoping it would like land right around here and I could dismount, but nope, it flew right on the top. Rip. Oh well, you got to see a chocobo for a bit. Listening, listening, waiting, waiting. Hey, Kramova. Well, we have what we came here for. Now then, let us pray that Freckles is still alive and well. <sighs> He'd better. I'll kill that lady if 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 she, if she hurt poor poor Theomason. Don't think I won't. I'll, I'll get arrested. I don't even care. Apparently, there's an S rank here. These people are like on my way for S rank. Anyone on the way? Also, if you're tired, Alteron, you can go to bed or something. It's totally fine. It's about time. I'm freezing, and I had half a mind to skin this one to keep warm. Now then, hand it over. Money. Looks at money. Here you are. The entire fortune that was bequeathed unto me. Share it with your people as recompense, starting with the families of the bereaved. On behalf of Ma House Mantgrini, I am truly sorry. For Fen, what have you gotten yourself into this time? I swear I leave you alone for just a moment. It was never in any danger, Lee. I prayed to the Fury, and by her hand was Kramavoir returned to me. I'm terribly sorry to have involved you in my personal affairs. I should have known that the lives of my family would not be enough to sate the small folks of thirst for vengeance. I think nothing of it. I too lost my father, so if you ever have need to speak about it, you can confide in me as a friend. Oh, Kramova! Friend zoned! <laughs> My father sought to curry favor with the Holy See, so he raised great levies to send to the front lines. Honor was his prize, but it was bought with the blood of his subjects, and eventually his own. The small folk had come to resent his demands for service, and when the truth of the war was revealed, they revolted. The mob over overran the manor guard, and my father and five brothers they perished at their hands. Had I not been sent away, I would have surely died with them. My fortunes had grown poor following the calamity, you see, and since I was the youngest, father bid me make my own way. So I enrolled in the scholasticate with hopes of becoming a bishop, to bring honor to myself and my house. But now... No, there's no use dwelling on what could have been. We must look to the future and do whatever we can to make Ishgard whole again. Every moment is sacred and you helped me to see that, Theo. Consider me your friend and ally. Woo! Mm-hmm. Friend. Well said, Cramavois. Well said. Together you may yet bring about lasting change. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Without the endorsement of the Scholasticate and the support of our peers, no one will listen to us. What's more, I still haven't heard anyone explain how we're supposed to get seats on the Trinity. Ishgard wasn't built in a day, Lee. Besides, we have plenty of time to work something out. Psst. 
Yeah, that's what you see. I knew we wouldn't take this seriously. Ho, 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 ho. Calm yourself, Lee. Keep an open mind. Now, let us return and discuss our next course of action. Oh, I nearly forgot. Inspector Briardian was looking for you at the cathedral. He wished to speak with you regarding his investigation, I believe. Mm-hmm. Well then, my associate, have you anything to report? Subject of House Montgomery demanding recompense for the misdeeds of Cromovore's father. How fortunate that the situation was resolved peacefully. Hmm. Ching. My investigation has been less productive, unfortunately. I thought to speak with Ula, the student who withdrew this from the Scholasticate, but I cannot find her anywhere. What? The same must be said of the infamous volume 11, which contains passages extolling the virtues of equality. Like the girl, it has vanished without a trace. Oh, jeez. So she didn't just, like, she didn't just bow wow. She's been, like, kidnapped. Hmm. The circumstances surrounding these incidents suggest deliberate intent. Someone may be attempting to turn this tenuous state of affairs to their advantage. But if so, then to what end? Hmm. For one thousand years, a sickness has ravaged our city. It has festered within the hearts and minds of our citizens, and in our clergy especially. Treating it will be a long and arduous process, but an altogether necessary one. Our role in that process is clear, to diagnose the root of the Scholasticate's ailments. If there are malicious forces at work, it is our duty to see justice done. Heck yeah, well said, Mr. Briardian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In a time of unrest, when the light of truth is lost to the righteous, the children look to one another for guidance, that they might walk in her grace. So, this is kind of the halfway part. Now, now that the stage has been set, as it were, it's time for actual deduction. Can you figure out the secrets? Here it comes. Oh, if it isn't my trusted associate back from the field, as you will doubtless have seen for yourself, changes sweeping through Ishgard, and the veil which once threatened to smother the hearts and minds of our people is slowly but surely being lifted. Tis as if our fair city has been born anew, and it is in large part thanks to you, which is not to say our problems have come to an end. No, the silent struggle between the lowborn and highborn goes on, growing more fractious by the day. His mentioning there, actually, this is kind of, um, well, how would you call it? It's, um, uh, 3.3 is finished. There we go. That would be a better way to say it. I've come to believe that someone, somewhere, is fanning the flames of hatred to further their own ends, and I am convinced, now more than ever, that Ula's sudden disappearance, alongside that of Volume 11 of the Articles of Holona Quality, is no mere coincidence. Both she and it, after all, were passionate advocates of equality among men. As to who is responsible and what their true intentions might be, I cannot say. Ascertaining these things will no doubt require that we first find the missing girl, and as of this moment, our best hope of learning her whereabouts may rest upon discovering the fate of the book. 
As such, I shall continue searching for any clue that might lend us to the missing tome. In the meantime, I ask that you trouble the students for any information they might have on Ula. Failing that, I will find if they have witnessed any unusual occurrences around the Scholastic Kit. Anything at all. Well then, let us be about it. Indeed, let's catch up with our students after about a month of Ula being missing. Oh my goodness, I hope she's okay. Oof. Glorious water. Lacey has been so distracted lately. I'm lucky if I can get in a simple good morning from her. Ever since Ula left, she's been rushing about the city like a mad woman, looking for any information she can find on the girl, that she might have an excuse to talk to Theo Missent. Yeah, I'm telling you, this kid. The O... The only really unexpected change I've seen of late is in Lee's attitude towards Cramavoir. He seems, he really seems to have warmed to him. Why, he even went so far as to initiate a conversation the other day. Ha! He spoke to me, tis true, but t'was not out of fondness. He merely hates me very slightly less than he values Ula's safe return. While I cannot claim to have seen anything unusual exactly, I will say that things have not been the same here since La left. Somber doesn't do it justice. Look at this tiny child. One of the seniors told me that she'd been diagnosed with something called <sighs> lung rot and that she's too weak to attend any of the classes. Thinking back, I did hear her coughing from time to time, but I had no idea it was anything so serious. Oof, that sounds terrible. Oh, hey, Sentinel. How are you? Welcome back, Mistress Whispersong. Though the news of Ula's abrupt departure yet weighs heavily upon all of our minds, I'm certain that your presence within our hallowed halls will help put a to put a good many hearts at ease. Stern, a seminarian. Lessons of Volume 11 seem to resonate deeply with the law. She would off to stay up into the small hours reading and rereading them. Mayhap they spurred her to steal away in the night and take up with revolutionaries. Ugh, that sounds just, doesn't sound like her, but hey, Levaswap. Though some were shocked by the news of Ula's departure, our Combadin has worked tirelessly to reassure the student body that it is all for the best. How many times must I say this? Ula was not coerced into leaving, nor was she abducted, nor did she die from a fictitious disease. She quit the Scholasticate of her own free will for reasons known only to her and to the Fury. Really? Is it so difficult to understand? Hmm. Everything seems a little weird. Saturna, what do you have? Welcome back, Mistress Whispersong. What a pleasant surprise it is to see you. How might I be of service to you this day? Have you heard anything about Ula? Oh, or Theomacent. Yeah, Theomacent's not here either. Theomacent? Ah, in the wake of Ula's withdrawal, he and Lee have devoted their every waking moment to the task of uncovering her whereabouts. They are quite adamant that the girl must be found and persuaded to resume her studies here. As a matter of fact, they approached me earlier today to beg leave to travel to Corvane Mills, claiming that a trip there would yield the information they needed to accomplish their aim. No sooner had I granted their request that they rushed off. <laughs> Such compassion and eagerness to serve others is a rarity even among the clergy. I cannot tell you how proud I am of what fine young men they have become. So they went off to Corvane Mills. That's weird. There's nothing really there except the graveyard. Seems... Seems a suspect, if you know what I mean. What are you doing out there, you two? Making out? Everyone knows that if you are a... Everyone knows that if you're a harem protagonist, you can't make out with people. Because if you make out with them, then the uh, then all the people who ship the other guys would be sad. Exactly. Hmm. 
boy. Here we go. Off to Gorgon and Mills. This is a song about Gorgon and Mills. Hey everyone, it's Gorgon and Mills. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Gorgon and Gorgon and Mills. That's the song. Yeah, see, Lee's confessing under the sakura tree. I mean, the mills. Yeah, exactly. He he, he needed to ask Fiyama to meet him under the sakura like tree on graduation. Exactly. You know. You got it. Do my eyes deceive me? Surely it can't be you, Kalosa. What brings you to Gorgone Mills? Literally just looking for you guys. I just wanted to make sure that you guys didn't get, like, d murdered too. No, I hope Ula's not murdered. Please don't let Ula be murdered. What are you praying there, kid? Oh, you got the book! Kalosa! Is it really you? That we should be reunited thus amid the snowy peaks of Kurthesis? Why, it is nothing short of a miracle. I sense the hand of the divine at work. Halone has answered our prayers. <sighs> Theo, Kalosa has no idea what you're talking about. By all means, explain, but do it slowly and from the beginning. <laughs> My apologies. Excitement got the better of me. Kalosa, this is the resting place of Father Chasso, the man who found room in his heart for two waifs from the street, granting them the opportunity to rise above their station in life. Do you perchance recall the book that was stolen from Theo and burned by that by that lost soul that we once thought of as a brother it was one of the last mementos we had of the man now all that's left to remind us of him is this place indeed and while we often come here to seek solace and guidance in his blessed presence today our purpose is more practical with our search for ulad and impasse we had hoped he might grant us inspiration and that is why I believe our meeting with you here, in this our hour of need, is a sign from above. Mayhap the work of Father Chasseau himself. Oh, well, you know, that, that a lot of Catholics believe that, that, um, why, well, I mean, it's, it's a, it's not even common. It is like one of the tenets of Catholicism is that when you pray to a saint, the saint will, will help give the prayers up to the divine as well so uh, probably not exactly the work in in um air quotes but if he offered the prayer to halone maybe that's why it was answered so swiftly I take it from this that we are not meant to bear this burden alone, that the obstacles we face can only be surmounted by working in concert with others. Ula's disappearance has thrown the Scholasticate into turmoil, and the long-simmering mistrust between those of noble and ignoble birth has boiled over into outright hatred. Now, more than ever, we must seek to join hands with the like-minded souls who understand that this malice will only serve to sow further discord. Like-minded souls such as you. Hmm. I am reminded of the words of volume 11 of the Articles of Hellenic Polity. Of the Fury's love will all men receive, and by the balance of her spear will all be set free. Gotta balance that spear, man. We must strive to love our neighbor, neighbor even as we love ourselves, just as Helone does. To do otherwise is to defy her will. Yes, and while we will surely be rewarded for our tolerance, the highborn bastards who would sooner pretend that passage doesn't exist won't be too lucky. Why, they may even find themselves on the receiving end of her spear for everything they've put us through. Ha 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 ha! Sorry, getting ahead of myself, aren't I? We still haven't found a single clue as to Ula's whereabouts. Fear not, me. With Kalosa at our side, I have faith that we shall find her, and that she will soon retake her rightful place in the hollowed halls of St. Endelin Scholasticate. I hope you're right. And anyway, we've done what we came to do, so there's no point in freezing our arses off out here. Till we meet again, Kalosa.
<laughs> I've seen my fair share of slice of like if animes, you know, you know. And also, he did have. Oh, he had two waifs. No, he had waifs, not two waifus. Come on now. <laughs> but at that point, they were they were underage, so definitely not. Please no. Please don't. <laughs> no, no, no. They had waifs. Waifs, not waifus. Waifs. All right, back to the Scholasticate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, please, no. Oof. <laughs> no, it's the Amacent who has, like, he's ha he has three waifus now? Yeah, Lee and Blasey and Cremivore. That's it, yeah. It's Le it's Theomacent who has who has three waifus. Mistress Whispersong, I trust you were able to find Theomacent and Lee. They were at a Gorgane Mills, yep. I see. Yes, the two of them have always shared a special bond with Father Chisseau, one that only seems to have grown stronger with his passing. It is encouraging to see that they have taken their lessons to heart and continue to work so fervently for the good of their fellow students. I fear, however, that a dark and treacherous path lies ahead of them. I only pray that when the time comes, they are ready for whatever challenges may await. That sounds... that sounds a little ominous. You okay there, Saturnor? He has a troubled frown, and what is this... what is this... Good, like, banner looking all, like, creepy? Mistress Whispersong. Just the woman I was hoping to see. I'm sorry to say that a rather disturbing rumor has been circulating around the Scholasticate of late. One of which, one of which com claims that our combatant arranged for Ula to be <coughs> taken away. That the boy scorns those who favor different interpretations of the scriptures, I do not deny. But I labor to believe that he would have gone so far. To engage in such conduct would risk not only his own position as prefect, but the very honor of House Zamail, both of which mean a great deal to him. Regretfully, no one seems to know whence these ridiculous rumors came. They could have been concocted by anyone, and for any number of reasons. In any event, with many still unsure of what to make of Ula's sudden withdrawal, these wild accusations have only served to deepen the divide between our seminarians. At this rate, I fear others may decide they no longer wish to remain at the Scholasticate. And so I would be most grateful if you would consent to investigate this matter. Should you oblige my request, I suggest you begin by speaking with Le Bessois. I am told he has spent the past few days looking into Ula's activities prior to her departure, likely with the intent to absolve our combatant of suspicion. That seems weird. He's just continuing his adoptive father's legacy and doing it better. Theomacent is basically the best NPC in all of Final Fantasy XIV. I'm sorry. It's just, it's true. He just does everything better. He's better than me. He could probably defeat Nidhogg if he wanted to. I'm just saying. And he would probably do it by just being very sweet at him. And then Nidhogg would pinch his widow cheeks. And then that would be it. And then he'd just be defeated. That's it. Oh, by the way, here's where Lebeswa is. <laughs> hey, Lebeswa, what's up? What up, my man? Whoa, bold words, lady. I'm saying he's better than Colossa. I'm just saying. Oh, wait, I did say he was the best NPC, and Colossa is a PC. So that, uh, may, maybe, maybe they're equal. I'll, okay, we'll go with equal. Let me guess, you caught wind of the rumors and thought you would come and investigate, yes? Yep, that's what I'm doing. Well, I'll have you know that our combatant is innocent. He has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with any of this. This, 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 this nonsense. I've known him since childhood. While he might occasionally seem somewhat high-handed, may have even callous. He would never do anything to harm anyone. If that is not enough, there is also the fact that in the days and weeks prior to Ula's disappearance, I was not out of his company for more than a few moments. He cannot possibly have committed the crime of which he, he is accused without my knowledge. 
Whoever orchestrated all of this clearly planned for the blame to fall squarely on his shoulders. That much is certain. Yet numerous as the enemies of House Zamile are, I struggle to think who would resort to something so underhanded. I'm just saying, when I first played this, he said, don't worry. This, this is absolutely stupid. I was with him the entire time and immediately, and I was like, oh, so you're an accomplice then. Like, it's so obvious. Like, if neither of you have an alibi, except we were together, Anyway, that was that was what I said immediately. Anyway, Levisois, unless it was the girl herself, don't you see? What better way to besmirch the good name of one of Ishgard's foremost houses and win over your peers than to vanish and later spread rumors that he was somehow responsible and then go around and plant plant that 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 is to say, oh, by the fury, I pray I'm not making a mistake. But first, I would have you swear to tell none but the inspector about uh, what I am about to reveal. Sure? Okay. Here. What's this? Hmm. A book? <gasps> the 11th volume? I stumbled across this. Volume 11 of the Articles of Hellenic Polity. It had been conspicuously placed in our competence dormitory room, with Ula's favorite bookmark tucked between its pages. I need hardly tell you what would happen if people were to learn of this. Tis but a mercy that I chanced upon it, and, and not one more credulous. However, now that we have deduced what... Now that we have deduced who the perpetrator is, Ula, it should be simple enough to restore our competence reputation. All we need to do is prove that she and her revolutionary friends are responsible. Were I a braver and more foolish man, I would march down into the broom and demand answers. But you, a hero blessed with the strength of a hundred, need not fear for your well-being as... Ugh, need not fear for your well-being there as I do. You are my only hope. Please, I beg of you, take the book, use it to find the girl, and prove those foul rumors false. Sure, okay. Time for investigation. What about everybody from Hildebrand? That's true, Alteron. That's very true. Hildebrand is absolutely amazing, but you forget. I loved babies. I love tiny child kids like 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 Theomason and he is my son and I love him. So sorry. Even Hildebrand. I just I love Theomason. He is my son and I love him and I can't I can't oh but we have to go to um Briardian first. Not to the broom. He said to go to the broom but he also said to deliver this to Briardian. Let's go do that. No! Don't pit him against Francel, my tiny babies! Like a dagger in my heart. No! Well, okay. Fran I'm sorry, but Francel has a baby face, but he is still an adult. Theomacent is a is still basically a child. So, his baby face makes sense. So, there you go. He's my child. He's my son. Francel is just an adorable baby-faced boy whom I love. But, I, I, got, I gotta, I, I'm telling you, I gotta give it over to the Amazon. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, closer, you're returned. Please tell me your inquiries have been more fruitful than mine own. Yeah, here's volume 11 of the Articles of Alonic Polity, the infamous tome of parables on equality said to have mysteriously vanished off the library shelves sh shortly prior to Ula's equally inexplicable disappearance. <laughs> this, it's the missing volume. However did you find it? Well, it was given to me. So Levisois believes that Ula, or one of her revolutionary friends, planted it in our combatant's room as part of an elaborate scheme to defame House Zamile. 
While you continue to be amazed by what ridiculous conspiracies these children can convince themselves are true, as if the future of Ishgardian society sh shall be shaped by the actions of some few ambitious seminarians. Anyway, I shall allow that she may have been consorting with others who supported Reformation, and were she persuaded to engage in rebellious acts, the dormitory prefect would have been an ideal target. Alternatively, our combatant was so arrogant and careless that he thought nothing of leaving incriminating evidence in plain sight. He would hardly be the first. So right now, the big ones, Lebesois was mentioning, um, the Ula, and now another person might still be our combatant, but if that's true, then Lebesois would be a, um, an accomplice, probably, if, if what he says is true. Needless to say, speculation will avail us not at this juncture. First, I must see what I can learn from this book. In the meantime, I would have you go and speak with the people of the broom. See what they know, if anything, about Ula, where she might have gone, whom she might have visited, and so forth. Failing that, keep your ears open for news of unusual happenings. One can never be too well informed. I'm sorry to tear you apart like this. No, you're not. Don't lie. Ly lying is a sin, and we're in a cathedral. <laughs> uh, going to the broom. Going to the broom down here, and gonna ask questions. Oh, yeah. Going to the broom down here, yeah. Gonna ask questions here now. You're not about to ask me to do a favor, are you? You'll forgive me for being suspicious, but just the other day a man draped from head to toe and fine silks approached me, all nervous and twitching. Tossed me a purse at my feet, saying the gill and it was mine for the taking. All I had to do was head to the crozier and buy him a couple of vials of cough syrup. Tempting as it was, I wasn't about to risk getting involved in some shady schemes, so I told him to piss off and that was that. You know what, we've had the, the bride's moogle for a while. Hey, we'll take that. It looks like they're above us. Oh no, they're down below. I remember now. Way under here. There we go, it's Ben. Leave me be, I got nothing to say to the likes of you. Hey, what was that? You think I might have helped kidnap some eyeborn girl? God's a sake! You and the opposite make a fine pair, you do, acting all high and mighty, pretending you can. The only time you come around is when you're looking for someone to blame. Sorry to disappoint you, but I've got nothing to do with this Ula's disappearance. If you ask me, you better, you'd have better luck harassing those bluebirds and the pillars. After all, they know better than anyone how to deal with inconveniences, eh? I mean, true. Someone's doing the carpenter quests. Someone just reached, attained level 59 in the carpenter quests. Nice. Almost there. Almost to 60. And then she can do the, the 60 um, quest. And then she'll have to learn how to get that book. Hey. It's hilarious, because I can, like, buy the ingredients for that, like, long, that, like, trident, and then sell it for, like, a bazillion gill, because no one actually wants to buy the, the master's books. I distinctly recall telling you once that my patrons appreciate their privacy. Hey, Tenderland, please don't jump over the place. They're gonna cook you. Still, I know you wouldn't ask if it weren't important, so this time I'll oblige your curiosity. This hasn't got anything to do with your missing girl, mine, but a few days back, this one fellow comes and pays his tab in full. Surprising development, as I'd long since written it off as a loss. Came into money, he says, and has a mind to settle his debts. Pleased as I am by his changing fortunes, all the while I'm wondering who he left bleeding in an alley to get that much gill at once. <sighs> Well, that guy said that down there that there was a person in silks who wanted it, who was going to give him, like, a bunch of money. 
someone dressed in silks, so it must have been a highborn person, like Ben was saying. Who could it be, though? Uh, yes, I did. I did add it to favorite, so I gotta watch and make sure it doesn't come up randomly. Uh, <laughs> it's a little early for that one, but that's fine. Excellent timing, Kalosa. I have findings to share. With Ula's bookmarks suggest that Volume 11 was within her possession at some point, it does not tell us when that point may have been. With this in mind, I decided to pay a visit to the seminary library. Sure enough, her signature was in the logs, indicating that she was the last person to have borrowed the tome. I compared the handwriting to samples from her old assignments to be sure, and found no irregularities. One might argue that this supports Le Bessois theory, but it is far from conclusive evidence. Oh, I suppose you cannot use these vaunted powers of yours to grant us a vision of the past and spare us further hardship. You know what? I wish I could. The echo don't work like that. I thought not. Then we shall rely on the more traditional methods. So, what came of your inquiries in the broom? Do tell. Uh, sounds like a highborn person is giving money out to people to, for buying cough medicine? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Well, that is to be expected, is it not? Wow, they're not actually mentioning. <laughs> hey! Hey! Dumb about cough medicine. But yeah, nothing. That is to be expected, is it not? Again, I am reminded how ridiculous the two scenarios presented to us purporting grand conspiracies truly are. Is it not more likely that both the girl and our combatant are innocent of wrongdoing? Then who can it be? <sighs> we must continue searching for more clues. Even if, even the most insignificant tidbit may be all it takes to for the pieces of the puzzle to fall into place. I wonder what it could be. Oh, hey, it's place. Seeing how reluctant some of the citizens were to answer your questions, I believe it best for me to take over investigations in the broom. As for you, I yes, I was given to understand that Blasey and her friends have been conducting their own investigation. Wait, how do you know her name? I mean, I said it out loud, but like, what? Though I am loath to admit it, given the fact that they are seminarians, I should not be surprised if they have overlooked- if they have noticed something we overlooked. You may as well go and see what Blasey has learned. If you cannot find her at the Scholastic Kit, I imagine someone can point you in the right direction. This guy is really familiar with a seminarian who's like freaking like eight, like barely 18. It's creepy. Briardian, why are you a creep? question I too would like the, the answer to. It feels as though Blasey and I haven't spoken in ages. I did, however, overhear some of the other seminarians say that they saw Theomacent at the Ark of the Venerable. If so, Blasey is certain to be close by. That's true. Oh, what with them working so hard to bring Ula back, Theomacent and Blasey have gone have had good reason to spend a great deal of time together. These past few days, they've been running around the city making inquiries. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they're doing to today. Hasn't she been following Thiamacin around like a lost puppy this past fortnight? Find him and you'll probably find her, that's what I say. I don't know how he puts up with it, frankly. I suppose that, unlike some of the seniors, he's just too kind for his own good. Blasey, haven't seen her all day. Expect she's gone out again with her friends to look for Ula. Go? Okay. I still don't understand why they bother. The girl's probably off gallivanting around with some heretics and revolutionaries. Even if they do find her, I doubt she'll want to return. Hmm. Is it? Yup. <laughs> Have you or the inspector managed to deduce anything from the book yet? Pray apprise me of your progress when you're able. Yeah, okay, Levisois. Of course I don't know where she is. While I may be in charge of the dormitory, it is not my responsibility to hold the seminarians' hands or wipe their asses. As you should as you should well know, in 
light of recent events, our combatant has not the luxury to concern himself with such trivialities. Well, probably hanging out with, uh, probably hanging out with the Amisen it was. He should know the names of everyone if he's good at his job. Yeah, but he specifically pointed out Blasey. And not like Blasey, Theomacent, and, and Lee are running around. No, he specifically said Blasey and like, what was it? And her friends or something? Uh, yeah, Blasey and her friends. Like, he specifically pointed her out only. And, like, I, I don't know, that's kind of rare in Japan. Usually you say, if, if you know everyone, you kind of, like, say the leader, or, like, a, or like a male character, or male first. Like, this just seems really sus, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Are you certain you're not, you, are you certain you've seen no one that fits that description? Have you seen a young woman, small of stature, with auburn hair and pale blue eyes? <laughs> Tis a wonderful morning to enjoy a spot of reading outdoors. Why, I dare say it's nearly as lovely as you, my fair lady. Do you often come here to study? Hey, lady. Come here often. Wink. Oh, hey, Blasey. Just hiding in the back, away from everyone else. Yeah, because I also... Blasey and her friends. Yeah, the, I I believe, I believe that they're friends. Uh-huh. Yo, Blasey, what's up? Staring right at the Amazon. Oh. Oh, oh you, you startled me. I, I'm here for Ula's sake, lest you wonder. This is all part of the investigation, I swear. Wait a minute. She just adjusted her spectacles. Wait, you're not a seminarian, and you seem so familiar. Oh, I know. You're my brother's associate. Brother? My brother? You mean... My apologies, Mistress Colosa. I suppose we have yet to be properly introduced. I'm Blasey, Briardian's younger sister. It is a pleasure to finally meet you. <gasps> so that's why he knew her. He wasn't being a creep, he just knew his little sister. Aww, that's a sweetheart. I'm sorry, Briardian. I'm sorry I called you a creep. So he sent you to see what I've learned, and then I'm afraid you'll be disappointed. I spent all night questioning merchants, watchmen, and random passers-by, and they told me absolutely nothing of interest. I recorded their statements for good measure, but quite honestly, it was a waste of ink and paper. Oh, oh Blasey. It's okay. Blasey, what are you doing here? Theo, oh, I... Fancy meeting you here. I was just taking a moment to review the testimonies I had taken and thought to, um, um, um. Ha! Ha! Ah, but of course, you then thought to come and share your findings with us. Look at Cramavaw. He is the best wingman. Good job. Good on you, Cramavaw. Yes, that's it. While it might be a bit much, I wanted to make sure I didn't omit a single word. Here you are. Thank you. By the fury, Blasey, this is over uh, 100 fulms long. That, that's, of course, feet. I cannot even begin to imagine the amount of effort it took to organize all of this information. It's incredibly heartening to know that there are others as dedicated as us to seeing Ula returned. Now, let's have a look, shall we? Investigation log entry one. Master of Ishgardian Markets, Mistress Elise. Problems? Well, with this recent run of bad weather, we've had plenty. Why, just the other day, my back started to give me trouble again. And I've had to hobble from place to place. What? 
Investigation log entry two, house for Tom Stewart honorary. I cannot guarantee that this news will be of great interest to you and yours, but a 12 point proposal by the reformation of the inquisition has recently been tabled by Lord Artorial in the house of Lords. Yeah, see house of Lords, this is supposed to be after 3.3, they, they'll talk about that. Investigation log entry 10, Weaponsmith Elbert. Ever since the blue bastard and his lapdog put an end to the war, profits have plummeted. I've had to sell my best stock for a fraction of its worth just to make ends meet. <laughs> Investigation log entry 21, Carvery, Mester Noir. I barely, I have barely enough time to fill my customers' orders, much less keep an eye out for foolish. No! God damn it, Theo! That's enough! None of that rubbish is even remotely relevant! Uh, now, now, don't you think you're being a touch too hasty? We've not gotten even a third of the way through. We may yet learn something of value. Let's not dismiss Blasey's hard work out of hand. Oh, sweetheart! Mm-hmm. Thank you, Theo, for your kind words. I'm glad that you think it may be of use. Fine. Let us briefly entertain the thought and say that something in these notes will help us find law. How exactly do you propose that we determine what that is? I love Lee being super jealous. Lee, Lee, he wouldn't do a thing. For though we may lack the skill to discern the relevant from the mundane, a certain inspector we know and love is a dab hand at such things, no? Mm hmm But of course, Inspector Briardian. Brilliant idea, Cramavoir. Colosa, if you would, take this scroll to him and see what he can make of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Alteron's doing the snore emote. <laughs> I doubt even he could make heads or tails of this rubbish. In any event, it's out of our hands. We should continue with our search. <laughs> yeah, but even an inspector couldn't do Blasey's stuff. Do Blasey's bad and not as good as me. Come on, Theo. Let's go together as bros. Only us two bros and Cramavoir, who's my wingman. Because he knows he's been thrown into the friend zone. Briardian is the love rival in the harem anime. No, he's not. He's not trying to get with the Almasen. No, at this point, it, what was it? Blasey. Blasey's the love rival. That, that's why he's getting all angry. We meet again. Doubtless you have much to share. I know I do. Do you recall Gilbrod's patron who recently paid off his debts and the gentleman attempting to attain cough syrups? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Sorry, it was a little... I, I kind of spoiled it. Upon further investigation, it turns out they share one astoundingly similar similar facial feature a pale raised scar running from the top of their left in cheekbone to their jaw it just so happens that this description also matches that of a notorious thug who is known to hang around outside taverns and harass patrons for coin until an unexpected windfall saw his fortunes vastly improve he is now ruined to make a living as a traveling merchant, though where he goes and what he sells, none can say. We shall find out in due time. But enough of my discoveries. What have you learned? Blasey's Notes. Oh, Kramavoss said a certain inspector we know and love. Okay. Briardian is the, is, the, is the love rival. Okay. Okay, I get it. See, this is why he was, Kramavar was friend zoned, so now he's going after Briardian. See, he knows. A scroll full of testimonies written in Blasey's meticulous hand, outlining any dubious activities shopkeeps and citizens of the Jules Crozier have recently witnessed. Ooh. Temple tap. I temple tapped. You couldn't see it, but I actually did it. By the fury, this is longer than some scripture. And she compiled it on less than a single day, you say? Remarkable. Maybe instead of just being a seminarian, maybe if she wants to, she could become your associate when she gets older. Mm-hmm. 
Investigation log entry one. Master of Ishgardian markets and Mistress Elsa. Problems with this recent run of bad weather, we've had plenty. But just the other day, my back started to give me trouble again. I've had to hobble from place to place. On the other hand, the Crozier has been increased, has seen increased trading in oils, furs, and other goods. Folks begin to crave when it grows cold. So in that regard, I can't complain. Purveyor of sundries, pa pass de vie. Pass de vie. The other day, there was this one fellow who wanted to purchase robes for a young woman. A merchant, he said, but I've never known one who couldn't be bothered to haggle. Not that I minded, of course. <gasps> we were talking about a merchant who had an unexpected windfall. He was buying robes, but only for women? Carvery, mess Carvery. Oh, right. I've barely enough time to fill my customer's orders, much less keep an eye out for foolish girls getting themselves into trouble. If you excuse me, I must really get it back, getting back to it. I'm expecting several regular customers any minute. Apothecary PN. Mestino has brought my whole has bought my whole stock of cough syrup every day for the past week. Passing strange, needless to say, so I followed him and found out that he was reselling my products to another. The nerve of some people, I tell you. Gentlemen for curing cough medicines through a third party. That story has a familiar ring, does it not? A man with a questionable past, recently come into wealth and playing at being a merchant, who so happens to travel with a young girl prone to fits of coughing. <gasps> Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Colosa? Oh, jeez. Hey, kids at home, can you figure out who the person might be? Da 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 da. What was it? Do -do 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 Alright, um, so, Mistress Alice is a red herring. Pass Devier was selling the robes to someone, but he was that he he was just the person who had robes to someone else was buying them. He was the one selling them. Um, the medicine is key, but this is that was that's another like thing to trip you up. Piana is the man who makes the cough medicine, but we need the third party person. Mestino was the one who bought up all of the cough medicine to give to someone else. So we need to look for him. Mm -hmm. If you mess this up, if you mess this up, he says, Oh, that was close, but this is the real right answer. Nor I. Tis a pity our merchant friend had not the wits to match his newfound wealth. I could not have done with I could have done with a greater challenge. But that is neither here nor there. Come closer, let us pay a visit to Mestino's stall. There you go. Secrets. I told you we'd have to start actually doing deductive things. Given how poorly this man has covered his tracks, I am inclined to believe that he will come to the Crozier sooner rather than later to procure the usual assortment of goods. Let us head there, Colosa. We must follow the trail while it is still fresh. And a finger clipping through the sleeve of the rope. Quiet, you. Shut it up. Shut it up, you. Shut it up, me. Which is why it's silly to me that, like, the reason why they don't let Viera or Hrothgar have helmets is because, um, there's too many clipping issues, and it was like, um, literally everything clips, so, like, uh, oh, oh, yeah, here they are. <laughs> She'll take the switch to both of us! I told you we shouldn't have gotten those honey cakes. I love these kids. These are the stupidest kids. Hey, Briardian. Alright, time to keep our eyes peeled. Oh, there he is.
I mean, look, my pigtails are clipping through my collar here. This my stuff clips through everything. How come Viera? You can't just let Viera ears clip through some helmets. It's not a huge deal. Ooh. Anyway, if he if he comes this way to purchase food and medicines from Mestino as frequently as Blaise his notes indicate, we shouldn't have long until close over there. That is Scar. Those robes. That's our man. Pleasure to see you again, sir. The usual. Aye, oh, and don't forget the you-know-what. He had the scar, too. It's him. Hurry, Calosa. We mustn't let him out of our sight. Mm-hmm. Not that I care, though. I don't actually play a Viera. And honestly, I don't like a lot of the hats anyway. You can tell I don't even have a hat. I have a chocobo feather. So I don't really care, but I just think it's silly. Oh, they complain about clipping issues when everything clips. It's not a problem. We're not trying to get, like... As I said, the, the, the beauty of Final Fantasy XIV is not that we are... Um, it's not that everything looks perfect and always in place. <laughs> There's a lot better to, stuff to do than that. But whatever. Some people really like that, so. Whatever. If it, if it ruins their immersion, what are they gonna do? A suspect just passed through the Ark of the Worthy, where there are like to be fewer people. Take care not to be spotted. Heck, there are some, like, items and things that I absolutely hate wearing because it looks, my tail looks weird when I have them. So, I mean, I get it. I get it. Let's head out of here. I just, I kind of ruined everything, didn't I? <laughs> it would appear our suspect is not alone. He has a guard with him. I should very much like to know the contents of that carriage. Keep them distracted while I sneak past, will you? Approach them and announce that you are to conduct a surprise inspection. You are undoubtedly, you will undoubtedly command their full attention for a sufficient amount of time. Are you ready, Kalosa? Very good. Sounds like a plan. I am the muscle of this, of this association. Surprise inspection! Stop the car! Or stop the, the wagon! Free! 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 Inspection! What the seven hells are you on about? You're no Temple Knight! You've no right! Unless. Trust the goods have been properly secured, and the carriage is ready for a quick getaway if necessary. Mm -hmm. Go, Briardi, and go! Hey, the, the the guard turns around, but he got out of the way just in case, just in time. Right then, where were we? Ah, yes, we will not be consenting to your inspection. Now, kindly piss off. Damn it, boy, what are you doing? My apologies, sir. I, I thought I saw movement around back. Maybe I should go and check. Arr, I'll fight you if I have to. Idiot, can't you see this goon is intent on starting a fight? Take care of her first and conduct your checks after. As for you, 
You should have run when you still had the chance! Go, Briardian, go! Hello. Get her, you blundering fool! Oops. Oopsie doodle. <gasps> it's Ola! Closer, it is as we suspected. The thug and his guard have been holding Ula hostage in the back of this carriage ever since she vanished. Though this ordeal has undoubtedly caused her a great deal of distress, she does not appear to be physically injured. While you are doubtless eager to question her, as, am I, as I am, she must be given time to rest and recuperate. These two, on the other hand, need not be afforded any such consideration. You there! What is the meaning of this? Hey, Temple Knights. Ah, it seems all that earlier commotion has drawn the attention of the gods. Excellent. They can deal with the ruffians. We're just like Batman. We just tie up some people and leave them on their doorstep. Mm hmm I shall escort Ula to the Scholasticate dormitory and speak with the instructors. When all has been settled, let us speak again at St. Raymond's Cathedral. Mm-hmm. Shall we? Of course. Oh, poor Ula. I bet she's not going to be a smiling seminarian anymore. Mm -hmm. She needs hugs. Stacked. Be glad to hear that Ula will be fine. Sister Gatel is with her now, attending to her needs as we speak. Yeah! I expect she will soon be strong enough to answer our questions. Until then, however, we must make do with what information the Temple Knights can extract from the kidnappers. Unfortunately, while the ruffians confess to abducting Ula in exchange for a large sum of gill, they have told us little else of value thus far. Apparently, their employer draped themselves in such thick furs they could not even say if they were a man or a woman. <gasps> go, go! They claim this cloaked figure offered no explanation as to why they wanted them to snatch the girl and keep her confined to the carriage indefinitely. And so, they had no choice but to keep moving, to stay ahead of the Temple Knights and await further instructions. Jing. Hopefully, we will learn more as the interrogations progress. I fear, however, our mastermind has cloaked themselves in layer upon layer of secrecy, and it will take more than a few pointed questions to penetrate all of them. Hot. <gasps> Same, Ula. I need hugs, too. Aw, they almost said praying at the statue. Regardless of how well they hid in their intentions and their identity, we will bring them to justice soon enough. By the balance of her spear, they all be set free. And once we learn all we can from our friends in the Temple Knights' custody, as well as Ula, we will be that much closer to restoring peace to the Scholasticate. Uh-oh, someone's following the Amasent! No! Another creep! Is it another member of his harem? It's a n that, that'll be four! To shine the light of truth upon the secrets buried in the dark, the children once more come together that they may know her power and her glory. Wow. A burp. Worst time! Worst time to get a burp. 
Everyone needs hugs. Everyone always needs hugs. Oh, Kalosa, I was wondering when you'd show up. The Temple Knights have deemed Ula fit to recount the events of her kidnapping and have taken her into the room just beyond for questioning, with Blaze C to accompany for support. <gasps> Yay, Blaze C! Good girl, good on ya. She'll be a great inspector someday. Would appear the questioning is done. Let us see what we might learn. Mm-hmm. Lacey, what'd you learn? Hail, my good man. I am Inspector Briarian, and this is my associate, Kalosa. I understand that you have spoken with the law regarding her kidnapping. Is there right you might share with us? Inspector Briardia, Mistress Colosa, I fear that it would seem that Lady Ula knows even less of her own abduction than we do. As she tells it, the only people she saw during her captivity were the two thugs in our custody. We've questioned them thrice over, but they insist their employer had disguised themselves so well they cannot even say for certain if they are a man or a woman, much less give us a description. For what little it's worth, we did learn that the two were once orphans, raised as charges of the sea, to betray the nation that fed and clothed them for a handful of coin. <sighs> but I must return to my post. Should we come across anything of actual significance, I shall be sure to alert you. Bow. I'm sure Blasey gave her a hug. Blasey, are there any details our friend may have neglected to mention? I fear that Ula's testimony proved entirely unenlightening. There is another development, however, and it's been troubling me. Rumors that our competent was behind the abduction are circulating around the Scholasticate once more. Again with those asinine allegations! And this time the students seem convinced more than ever of his guilt. No longer content to sit back and wait for events to take their course, they've been pushing for his expulsion. Theo has been doing his best to convince them to disregard the rumors, but it seems any mention of our combatant only serves to fuel their rage. I must hurry back and help him. You do that, Blasey. Take care. I suspect that this is a reflection of the per on the prefect himself rather than a manifestation of aimless anxiety and fear. Still, I dare say this commotion might prove to be an opportunity in disguise. I shall make my way to the vault to continue my own investigations. In the meantime, I ask that you go and keep an eye on the seminarians and keep an ear to the ground. Getting close. We're gonna go a little over, I think, but uh, shouldn't be so bad. Shouldn't be four hours. I don't... <laughs> I say that. You can go to bed if you need to, Alteron, by the way. Don't 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 stay here for me if you are a sleepy boy. <laughs> Our comedian is a do dur jerk! And you should probably get thrown out. Yeah, he's a bad person. We should probably just get rid of him. No, we can't do that. What if those ruffians truly were in his employ? Are we to stand idly by while he betrays one of us as he did poor Ula? Yeah, that's what I say. No, please, wait. His refusal to provide us with anything resembling a reasonable explanation speaks for itself. The boy is guilty, and I say we move him to have him expelled from the Scholasticate, effective immediately. The officer, I demand that you take lead of this charge. Why? He's the one saying no. Why don't you take lead of it? Wait, please. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Kalosa just walks in like nonchalant, like, hey, what's up? Thank the fury you've come, Kalosa. Since the headmistress called everyone away for an emergency meeting, it's been absolute chaos. They're so incensed they won't listen to a word Theo or, or I say. Perhaps if you were to speak with them, it would help to soothe their angry feelings. Hey, you don't have an early start? Okay, I, 
technically I kind of have an early start, but it's okay because it's later than it used to be like last year. There's no solid evidence against our combatant, just the vague rumors that that keeps making the rounds. With all the resentment toward him, however, I guess that was all that was needed to indict, indict him. So what if there's no proof he had a hand in the law's abduction? He's guilty of so much more than that. Just ask anyone who suffered under his reign of terror. Enough is enough. I refuse to tolerate his presence within these halls for even one more day. One thing's for sure. If he didn't deserve it for this, he deserved it for something else. I think we should let the student body have him. Please, everyone, please calm yourselves. Before we take any drastic measures, let us discuss the matter like rational men. And women, I suppose. The frustration and anxiety that's been building ever since Ula first went missing has finally come to the surface. And for better or for worse, it's all being directed at our combatant. I'm sick of our combatant always pushing us around. If we don't take action now, what's to stop him from continuing to make our lives miserable? Or worse? We need to soothe the stern seminarian. Soothe. Now, now, everyone, let's all calm down. On second thought, I dare say you have the right of <laughs> Prefect just has the riches of has the mile at his disposal and powerful allies just waiting to spring to his aid. We must step back and consider our actions carefully, lest we find ourselves strung up by the necks. You would suggest we do nothing? The longer we dither about taking action, the greater the risk of him finding us out. And when he does, he'll see every last one of us suffer for it. Mark my words. He's frightened, as we all are, but that is precisely why we must proceed with caution. As you rightly observed, if we act out in anger or despair, we only doom ourselves to failure. Please, ma'am, if you would, rally his spirits as you have calmed mine own. Oh, he's so scared. It's okay, kid. We got this. No worries, kid. But of course, it is exactly as you say. Forgive me, my fear had gotten the better of me. Indeed, there is little he can do to us if we act as one and proceed with due caution. And remember, once our combatant is removed from the school, the administration will keep us safe. So we need not fear his retribution ever again. We must move swiftly but surely to ensure his expulsion. The Theomasin, can we count on you to lead us? Why are we asking him? He obviously is saying no. Thank you, Kalosa. Now that everyone is feeling more at ease, let us open the floor for discussion. I welcome any and all opinions, provided they are delivered in a calm and orderly fashion. I believe, that, I believe there is just cause to expel our combatant. As Colossa was kind enough to point out, however, we shouldn't act brashly. That is why you, Theomacent, with your calm demeanor, are best suited to head our appeal to have them removed. What say you? Given the way he's treated you in the past, I can understand why you'd readily assume the worst of him. I cannot help but believe, however, that he too is a victim in all of this. It's strange to think that anyone who cares so deeply about the Scholasticate and its inhabitants would commit such an atrocity. Theo, for the fury's sake, you would defend the very individual who for the past several years ridiculed and tortured us? Is it so impossible for you to believe he is capable of such villainy? Of course. Until there is proof to say he is guilty, we must give him the benefit of the doubt. There is a place that once said innocent until proven guilty, and I believe it. Burp, burp, burp. I didn't say that. That was me. <laughs> He was rightly. I bear no great love for our combatant either, but even the Temple Knights have been unable to uncover a single piece of evidence tying him to the kidnapping. Of course. Same knights who pulled the world over our, wool over our eyes for a thousand years, stripping us of all we own to protect men like him? How heartening that is to hear. I... I would have thought that after all you would endured at our competent hands, you would stand with us. See, I was wrong. Friends, it would seem the commoner has grown too content under the nobleman's yoke to fight for his ideals. If we are to see justice served, we must do so with our own strength, our own voices. Let us draft a petition that our grievances might be heard and the blackguard expelled. Yeah, let's go! Wait! Stop! 
How can they be so blind? The villain who kidnapped Ula is playing us all for fools, stoking the flames of hatred that we might all be consumed by them. <sighs> Objection! Yes, basically. I can understand not wanting con to condemn the man without solid evidence, but Theo practically threw himself on the bastard's burning pyre back there. And for what? He suffered the most at our competence hand. Why does he still try to help him? There's no stopping an angry mob, I fear. Wonder if any of us will emerge from this unscathed. Theo is a man of unwavering principle. That's why I love... Uh admire about him <sighs> i wish i too were possessed of such staunch conviction <laughs> the whipping boy if only i could have done more to dissuade them this blind persecution will only serve to divide us and our competence expulsion would be a tremendous loss for the scholasticate why will no one listen to reason Theo, there's still time to turn things around, I'm sure of it. I I'll help in any way I can. Mm hmm Thank you, Blasey, for your kind words. Indeed, it's not too late to reverse the course of today's events. We should try speaking with Father Saturnoi. Surely he'll know what to do. Incredible. Despite all that, he's still intent on saving our combatant. Calosa, there's no talking him out of it now. Considering how our last discussion ended, it would put me much at ease if you were to accompany us. I shall be staying behind. There are a few things that I would attend to here. My dear Blasey, if you would, I would do with an extra pair of hands. Of course. In that case, Lee Calosa, let's make haste to the cathedral. The headmistress's meeting will not run forever, and we must catch Father Saturnoi before the others do. Father Saturnoi, please, we need your help. Brother Saturnoi, we need to talk to you. It's about our combatant. The Amazon, Lee, and Colosa. What brings you here in such a hurry? Ah, it happily concerns the petition I just received from the student body. Oh no, we missed it! Not to worry. Rest assured that I have reviewed the document and will be submitting it to the headmistress shortly, along with my own strong recommendation in favor of our combatant's immediate and irrevocable expulsion from the Scholasticate. Wait, Father, we're not here in support of the petition, but rather to argue against it. We cannot rightly expel our combatant for a crime that the evidence, or lack thereof, suggests he did not even commit. Quite true. And yet it is it not because and yet it is not because I believe him guilty that I have chosen to move forward with this proposal. What? Then why? Mm. For too long has our church been corrupted by men and women who would see its foundation built upon sin instead of virtue. I mean to put an end to this vicious cycle. What? What are you saying? Leomacent, Lee, there is something you must know. When I was young, I too was taken under the wing of Father Chasseau. It was by his good graces that I gained admission to the Scholasticate, not unlike yourselves. Ah! I devoted myself entirely to my studies, that I might prove myself worthy of his kindness. My dedication was rewarded when I graduated at the top of my class and secured a prized position in the archives, along with some of the Holy See's most esteemed individuals. It was there that I met the man who would become my closest friend and confidant. For ten years he had toiled in the sea's darkest recesses, working to see that the ugly truth of Ishgard's past would never see the light of day, until one day the burden grew too great to bear took his own life. For years I was torn between grief and anger at not being able to save him from his fate. Fearing my anguish would consume me, I found succor in my religion. 
day and night I'd pore over scripture, and soon I found myself back in these very halls, not as a student, but as a teacher. A tragic story indeed, and you have my condolences for your loss, but what does that have to do with our Comedin? Of the Fury's love will all men receive, and by the balance of her spear will all be set free. Doubtless you too are familiar with these words. Those who deny the teachings of Volume 11 commit the greatest sin of all. They must bear full responsibility for the injustices wrought on the victims of our society. Our master, our combatant, has done naught but scorn the truths penned within the tome. His dismissal is long overdue. Ugh. This is madness! The Fury knows I bear no love for the bastard, but what you propose is to lay the blame for generation upon generation of the church's transgressions at one kid's feet! I do only what must be done. Countless lives were lost in the Dragon Song War. We must needs purge the church of any who espouse the false ideal that all men are not born equal, that the sins of our past are never repeated, and that the clergy might be restored to their former glory. I have faith in you, my children. Reflect on the teachings of Father Chasseau. You do not understand now. You will soon enough. <sighs> it's true that Father Chasseau was an ardent advocate of equality, who strove always to adhere to the principles espoused in equal under her ever watchful gaze. Tis equally true that our competent has been outspoken in condemning that self same passage. Still, that hardly warrants his expulsion. <sighs> You must admit, the man's got a point. Making an example of the son of one of the Ishgard's most prominent houses would send a message, and it might be the fastest way to bring about the change he seeks. Whether or not that change would be for the better, however, that's another matter entirely. It was one thing when... It was one thing when it was just an angry mob of seminarians calling for Amber er, or Combatant's head. Now that Father Saturnoy leads, intends to lead the charge, it's another matter entirely. What are we going to do? We should speak with our Combatant. Maybe he can find a way to prove his innocence. Uh, but of course, our Combatant's nothing if not astute. He's sure to have an idea or two on how to extricate himself from this predicament. Come, let us make for the pillars. Yep, this is the this is the side post heavenward story that you missed. You're getting it towards the very end. You're you're missing a lot of the stuff. Essentially, this kid is is put on the chopping block because because he was like freaking a, he was a jerk to everyone and um so everyone's like well he we need to expel him to make it to show that this that's how we're gonna change the the church and so this cute um tiny boy who is also a harem protagonist does it does, wants to try and make sure that justice is served instead of just laying the blame at people's feet. We should ex oh also we should excommunicate this altar boy because he thinks that Luke was more accurate than John. Yep, yep, that yep, yep, that's ba that's basically what he's saying. Yep. <laughs> ah, beautiful. So that's why our combatant hasn't been rampaging about this glass kit. Call me crazy, but I almost feel sorry for Lebesois. Closer, what should we do? I, I've never seen them like this. Leave us. This has nothing to do with you. What baseless accusations would you care to hurl at me this time? Attempting to destroy the church? Or perhaps you're here to bring light to the personal hand I had in instigating the Dragon Song War? Perhaps instead of entertaining every ridiculous rumor you hear, you might actually make yourself useful for once. You can start by questioning those two beside you. After all, they're the ones who arranged this entire farce who have been spreading these letters in a pathetically transparent attempt to incriminate that me that I might be expelled. 
please listen, Arcombadon. We know that the accusations being leveled at you are unfounded. I know we've had our differences, but today we come to lend you our aid. He's so full of rage, he can scarce hear a word I say. Please, Kalosa, perhaps you can try soothing him. All right, Arcombadon. Calm yourself. Calm your titties. Make me laugh! You expect to believe that you, the two who stand to gain the most from my expulsion, have not so much as seen the nonsense that's been making the rounds in the dormitories. What is this? The truth revealed? Our competent is Zemile a kidnapper? Trust me, if we were trying to implicate you in a crime you didn't commit, we would have done a far more thorough job than this. Indeed, these writings simply make an appeal to emotion without a single piece of concrete evidence to support the accusation. <sighs> Fine, perhaps it wasn't you two after all. Still, you rest assured that when I get my hands on the commoner who did this, they'll rue the day they thought to meddle with the affairs of House Zemile. You'd best realize we commoners are not the ones on trial here. You are. I suggest you watch your tongue unless you prefer to lose the only allies you seem to have these days. Don't lose heart, Uncombadon. Together we'll uncover the truth and see that this baseless petition against you was withdrawn. What? Psst. Why do I need your help? My innocence is beyond question, and the Fury herself will see my good name restored. I pray that she will. In the meantime, we too shall do our part. Fury's sake, Theo, leave it be. That aside, where do these papers even come from? Why didn't we receive one? If I had to guess, per perhaps they were given only to those most inclined to believe their accusations. Foolishness at best. If anything, these letters will only give me the clues I need to identify the coward behind them. As a matter of fact, I believe I know precisely where to begin my search. Brilliant! We would be more than happy to assist you in the investigation. Where would you have us go? Mm -hmm. And hand you the very knife you would put in my back. Do you think me daft? If the petition is approved and I'm expelled, that would put you right at the top of the class. How very convenient. No. Oh, Arcombadon, don't you see? It is not for awards or accolades that I study the scripture as I do. I seek only to follow in the footsteps of Father Chasseau. It was he who granted me the chance to achieve the grand vision he had for our realm and bring relief to those who need a spiritual succor. Of the Fury's love will all men receive, and by the balance of her spear will all be set free. I would share the wisdom of these words with all of Ishgar. Volume 11 of the 72 Articles of Hellonic Polity. <laughs> what is it with commoners and their obsession with that over-idealistic screed? Come, our confident. Let us not waste any further time entertaining the idle musings of the riffraff. Look, we can manage just fine without your help, but if you do find anything, not that we expect you to, you'll report back to us if you know what's good for you. Understand? If I didn't know any better, I'd say that almost sounded like a thank you. Well, if there's nothing else to do here, I suppose we should set to work. Mm -hmm. An excellent idea, Lee. Now, where do you propose we should start? Fury save us. We are doomed. so insist on unhelping the bastard, I'd have left him to find his own way out of this mess. On how best to proceed with the investigation. If we could tr only track down the author of the letters and convince them to recant these statements, the student body would have no choice but to withdraw their motion. But where would we even search? By searching more of the same document. A brilliant plan, Kalosa. By examining all the letters, we have 
been distributed through the Scholasticate, we may be able to find clues leading us to the culprit. It's settled then. Let's return to the Scholasticate and commence our search. Let's go! No, don't walk! Run! Search St. Endelim's Scholasticate for any suspicious letters. Oh, gotta go along the grain. Nice. I'm so happy that they quality of life to sprint. A few of the seminarians were generous enough to lend us letters they received. Upon a closer examination, it would appear that while the overarching message is the same, the precise argument is made differ from letter to letter. Whatever could it mean? It would seem that more than a few of the students tossed the papers in the rubbish without so much as reading them. Thankfully, I was able to scavenge up some ones that had been thrown away. Suspicious letter. Oh, Cremivore. Theo has already prized me of the situation. Not that he needed to, mind you. It is for this very reason that I have remained behind with Blasey to investigate the origin of the nasty rumors flying about. It didn't take long for us to connect the rumors to the letters and coax one of the seminarians to show us the documentary they- The DOCUMENT they had received. I don't know why we had TV shows. Don't ask questions. Thank you! I investigated further and behold, these are the ones I managed to collect in my search thus far. Under normal circumstances, the baseless incentives penned here would hardly suffice to convince anyone. It would seem, however, years of harbored animosity have blinded people to their better judgment. Hmm. Hey, Blasey, what you got? Oh, yes. In fact, Kramovar and I have been gathering letters all evening. Feast your eyes on this! Thanks, Blasey. One of the girls said that the letter just showed up on her bed, as if out of nowhere. I returned to my quarters to check if I had received something similar, but there was nothing to be found. At first I thought it was a simple oversight, yet after asking around I learned that there were more than a few others who, like me, had been overlooked. That was like Theo and Lee, they didn't get one. Hmm. Jean Chet. Suspicious letters. Whatever are you talking about? I've never received anything of the sort. Hmm. Now that you mention it, however, I did observe some of the seminarians tossing out crumpled slips of paper. Mayhap these are the letters you seek? Oh, and there's one in the corner here. All right, got the letters. Let's look at them. Ah, Colosa, did your search prove fruitful? We got four suspicious letters. Here you are. Excellent. Let us take a closer look and see what we can discern. Hmm, how curious. It would appear our couple has gone through trouble of writing and distributing three distinctly different versions of the letter. The first reads, as illustrated by the recent abduction that has taken place within these sacred halls, our combatant will stop at nothing to eliminate those who stand in his way. Such blatant disrespect of her teachings must not be tolerated. The second says, it is one thing to disagree with the opinions of your fellow seminarians. It is quite another to abuse one's influence to have your ideological opponents removed. Ula, a firm believer in the teachings of Volume 11 of the Articles of Holonic Polity, and staunch advocate of equality, fell victim to our combatant's treachery. The villain cannot go unpunished. And the last but not least, Ula's copy of Volume 11 was discovered in the Prefect's room shortly after the girl's disappearance. This, more than anything, proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that our combatant is guilty. Well the, well, the final letter is at least offers an argument, it is hardly a compelling one. Correct me if I'm mistaken, but aren't there several copies of the Articles of Hellenic Polity sitting in our library shelves? Well, I can't speak as to why our combatant would have won in the first place. The book found in his quarters could have been any one of those. Lacey, when you spoke with Ula earlier, did she mention anything about Volume 11? I didn't think of it at the time, 
but while Ula was recovering in the infirmary, she asked that I retrieve her copy from her room. When I went to look for it, it wasn't there. Which would mean the tome was removed unbeknownst to her. Mm-hmm. So it would seem. After all, she testified that when the two thugs seized her at the marketplace, she had nothing on her person but a pocket of gill. Presumably, the book was still in her quarters then. It would be one thing if the book had disappeared with the law, but for someone to sneak into her room and remove it after the fact? Why, it's as if the culprit intended to use it to frame our combatant all along. Why, I bet my last gill you were right, and that's the reason none of us received a letter. You were the only people who would be able to confirm with the law that the book had been pilfered from her room. But who would go through such great lengths to frame our combatant? <laughs> That's our Theo, always striving to help his fellow man, even if that man is all that stands between him and the top of the class. It's enough to leave a girl smitten, isn't it, Blazy? Kramavar is the best wingman. Well, what are you talking about? I'm not smitten, I just admire him for his kind heart, that's all. Oh! Ah! Blazy? Why ever did she dash off like that? Has she taken ill? In a matter of speaking. Uh, I'll go make sure she's okay. <laughs> I told you he's a harem protagonist. Oh dear. Well, whatever it is, I hope she recovers quickly. In the meantime, we need to put our heads together if we hope to get out of this mess. Colosa, what do you think? Why would anyone go through such great lengths to implicate our combatant? Hmm. Hmm. To throw others off the scent? But of course! Non save the kidnapper, him, n kidnapper, him or herself would have. Oh, non save the kidnapper, him or herself would have had such a strong motive to con concoct this convoluted plan, which raises the possibility that the kidnapping was not but a plot to have our combatant expelled in the first place. In other words, if we could track down the person behind the letters, we'll have ourselves the culprit behind Ola's abduction. We must inform Inspector Briardian straight away. I'll go right now. He's currently conducting an investigation at the vault, you say? Oh, sorry, that was not exactly what I said. Let us make our way there with all speed! Yeah, the letters themselves, though, are not talking about, like, it's not like a reference to the theses or anything. This is, um, ba this is actually about, um, the kidnapping, what they're trying, the, the, a girl ended up getting kidnapped, and she was, like, she was always talking about, let's all be equal, and so, like, oh no, we got a kidnapper, but it turns out that it might not have been because of, of her being like let's all be equal or let's let's d decide our own way it was because someone just hates our combatant that much that he's willing to do that this person is willing to do whatever it takes to get him shut down Lacey's quicker than she looks I gave up my search when I became evident I had no chance of finding her and was just on my way back to when lo and behold who do I see but you three Perfect vantage point. From here... Yeah, it's accusations against the kid on trial. The, the, this person, the kidnapper, wants our combatant gone because apparently this kidnapper just doesn't like our combatant for some reason. That's him over there! Riordan! Riordan, over here! Come on over! Yes, that Colosa wears the the um, feather of friendship. He is a pr he is a huge jerk. So like that that may that does not narrow down who the suspects are at this rate. Oh, it's you. Who brings you all the way here? Do you have something to report? Yeah, we got some. Yeah, we got some. Yeah, that's the ticket. I see. Show me the letters. I shall determine if they are as suspicious as you insist. This is every 
everything we've been able to find. Yeah, I was just mentioning before that I actually don't like a lot of the hats, especially because of the Bikote ears, but just in general, they usually like get rid of the hairstyle. So having having the circlet of friendship is actually really nice for me, I think. It's a little chocobo feather too. It's just adorable. We're thinking that it may be the kidnapper who wrote it. The author goes out of his way to mention that Ula's copy of Volume 11 was found in our combatant's room. The fool! In his feeble in his feeble plot to frame the prefect, he has only incriminated himself. Wait, what? I trust that you too have put the pieces together. Actually, I did not at this time, but. I actually, I hadn't figured it out at this point when I first did it, but I had stumbled on it in previously. It was kind of hilarious, but we'll go into it. You have proven an able associate indeed. It is from here, however, that the real work begins. Should at any time you feel the powers of concentration waver or your attention to detail slip, you need but do this. Take a deep breath and focus your eyes into the distance. In that moment, the solution will appear before you. Ching. The game is afoot, and if we intend to win the day, we must remain ever, ever vigilant. Now, let us get our man. See ya, Alex. Have fun. Oh, sorry, you learned the aim on spectacle. Sorry, I looked away for a sec. That's, that was the problem. That's what you do, man. I think I missed something. Who exactly are we going after? We can see the connection, but how does it help us deduce the identity of the perpetrator? Inspector Briardian truly is amazing. Why, he's cracked the case with little more than scattered scraps of evidence. Literally. A satisfied smirk steals across Briardian's face. Before we begin pursuing our man in earnest, answer me this. Can any of you tell me where Ula's copy of Volume 11 currently is? Letters say it was found in our combatant's room. Though, for all we know, that could be complete and utter bollocks. Hello, sir. I see you've managed to keep your word to Le Bessoir. Very good. Allow me to introduce, enlighten the rest of you. The tome is currently in my possession. Le Bessoir discovered it in... in it in our combatant's room and turned it over to us in secret for fear it would fuel the ongoing rumors. Now, now knowing what you do, it is time to put your minds to the test. What do you surmise is the relationship between our talented writer friend and the thief that lifted the book from Ula's quarters? And here it is. The, le the letter said it was found in his room. There is only one person who would have known. Now, there were three people who would have known about this. It, at the time, it was me, Colosa, it was Briardian, and Le Bessois. And there it is. Whoopsie doodle. Whoopsie doodle. And there, there was the slip up. Le Bessois, I guess, assumed that Colosa wouldn't actually do it and would actually run off to deliver it to someone else. Rip. It's time to put, yeah, yeah. Dajan. Wait a minute, what was that again? Uh, between our talented writer friend and the thief that lifted the book from Ula's quarters. They must be the one and the same. A sensible deduction. The planning of the book in our combatant's quarters and the subsequent distribution of these letters were both carried out to a common end to implicate the prefect in Ula's abduction and force his expulsion. It would stand to reason that the perpetrators are either working in tandem or, in fact, are one and the same. While that in itself does not reveal the identity of the culprit, it does lead us to our next question. Who would have been able to enter and exit Ula's room unnoticed? Only the prefects. The perpetrator was able to move quickly and not draw attention to themselves in the act, leading me to believe our book snatcher had easy access to all rooms within the dormitory. How, you might ask? Keys. Something only three people currently possess. 
for the Saturnoi, and the prefects are Combadin and Lebesois. So one of them is the culprit, but which could it be? It couldn't be! Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's your, that's your, <gasps> out, that's your out. Lebesois, you say, but he's our competence closest confidant. As he is the only person besides Colossa and the inspector here who have come in contact with the book, I'd say he is a prime suspect. Of course, this is but speculation. Colossa, I hear that you possess a great gift, one which you employ to reveal long-hidden truths about our nation. Might you not be able to use this power to shine some light on the matter at hand? Sorry, it doesn't work like that. It just comes when it wants to. So it is not yours to control. I guess that means we'll have to rely on our own wits to obtain the answers we seek. Wait, wits? Fortunately, I have an idea of my own, but I'll need your help to see it through. Sure. Well then, Theo, let us put this idea of yours into action. Last I heard, our combatant and Lebesois have taken refuge in Zamile Manor. Let's make our way there post haste. I'll leave you to... I'll leave you to see the bumblings of those three do not interfere with the final stage of my investigation of the vault. But why, what does the vault have anything to do with this? Briardian, you've got some melts up your sleeve. Do not tarry long with Father Saturnoi th throwing his full support behind the petition or combatant as but a few bells before his name is permanently struck from the registry. I... I shall do what I can to see the proceedings are delayed, but I cannot guarantee it will buy us all the time we need. God's the speed, Calosa. Let's see you at the hearing. Yeah, so as I said, I hadn't actually put it together about the whole thing, but way back when, when Lebesois said, I've been with our combatant this whole time, and he didn't do anything, blah, 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 blah. And I immediately said, well, how does that make you not an accomplice? Hmm, right there. I stumbled into it on accident <laughs> the first time, but I didn't actually figure out the thing yet. Looks like they're at it again. What do we do? Again? I want to take this kind of treatment sitting down. Whatever Theo's brilliant plan is, I certainly hope he took this into account. As you can see, our combatant and I are discussing important matters at the moment. If you have something to report, pray return later. Uh-oh. Hey, I'm not a cheater. I'm just saying. I already, I admitted that I didn't that I didn't figure it out the first time. Findings! Ha! As if anything you four managed to dig up can help me now. The hearing is as good as about to begin, and my fate is as good as sealed. It's still time, our combatant. Earlier, you pledged your innocence to us. Let us pledge it once more. At the hearing, before one and all, the truth shall speak for itself. The truth? You expect those fools to see the truth when this, this evidence, to the contrary, is staring them in the face. How do you think this plan your pea-sized minds have concocted will succeed when all of Lebesois' best attempts have failed? <laughs> we will succeed, our combatant, for it is not I, for it is not just I that stands with you, but the hero who brought to light the truth behind our very nation. Yes, there is nothing that she has not seen. Nothing. Surely you understand the implications of this, don't you, Lebesois? Close has the ability to peer into events of the past. Indeed, it was through her visions that Ishgard's true origins were brought to light. <laughs> you need say no more. She has already used her vaunted power to see that I was the one who, beh who was behind it all. Yes, it was I that kidnapped Ula. It was I that snuck into her room and stole volume 11. It was I that distributed distributed the letters, all so that I might implicate our competent. Hmm. How satisfying it is to finally be able to say it out loud. 
For so long I've had to plot my revenge in silence and mask my hatred for you with hollow praise and bashful smiles. Huh? Lepiswa, what, what madness is this you speak? You truly are oblivious, aren't you? Then allow me to enlighten you. After all the transgressions your family has committed against mine, do you truly think I would remain loyal to you? Huh? For centuries, your house has humiliated us. It was something we'd come to accept, but then the wall became, between the nobility and the common class came tumbling down, and we were met with the most harrowing truth of all, that all of our suffering had been for naught. Everything we grew up believing about our status was a fabrication. Tall tales spun to keep us complacent. In reality, you're no better than the two broom rats beside you. You never were. It was a terrible realization, but one also, the one that also gave me hope. What hope that you could be taken down just as any other. That's why I began plotting. Ula's abduction, the letters and the rumors they spurred. It was all part of my master plan. To bring shame and dishonor on you and your family and on your cow as you have had mine. We have, I have staked everything. Yes, even my very freedom. But it was worth it to give you a taste of our pain. <laughs> What's more, I bribed the two kidnappers into abducting Ula with money from your purse. And having entrusted the management of your finances to me, you never suspected a thing. Lepiswa, I can only imagine the pain you must have endured. But to seek revenge in this way... Nevertheless, I thank you for confessing to your crimes. Now we can absolve our combatant of the false charges brought against him. Wait. What? Wait, wait a minute. You mean that she didn't actually see into the past? You, you deceived me! Ha! You did indeed. If you recall, Theo never explicitly said that Kalosa had a vision of what happened to Allah. He merely observed that she possesses such an ability. Truth be told, it's not even a power that can be controlled at will. Now then, our combinant, I suppose that's all the proof of innocence you'll need. Let's escort Lebesois to the hearing and have him repeat his most dramatic confession before the headmistress. I never saw it. The hatred. I mean, how could I have been so blind? We've been friends from childhood, and never for a moment did I question his loyalty. What a fool I was! How did I think I could stand at the forefront of our nation when I was so oblivious to that which was happening under my very nose? Recombatin, pray do not torture yourself so. Rather, open your heart and allow Halone's wisdom to set you free. Once you come to see Lebesois, not only as a friend, but also as your peer, I promise that the both of you will find a way to mend any bonds that might have been broken. Of the Fury's love will all men receive, and by the balance of her spear will all be set free. You truly believe those words, don't you? You cling to them, even when reality does all it can to prove you wrong. I suppose it is unwavering faith that your, that your friends find so endearing now then it's time for me to put my own faith to the test and face my fate head on may the fury have mercy so what are we uh, waiting around here for we got a hearing to attend i'll meet you two there there's something i must confirm with the inspector first Closer, I cannot shake the feeling that this affair runs far deeper than any of us could have imagined. If you would, please accompany our combatant to his hearing and see that it that and see to it that nothing goes awry in my absence. Mm-hmm. Of course. <laughs> yeah, Columbo, eat your heart out. Colossus on the case. Let's be honest, though. That was basically the. Remember the pilot episode? That was basically what it was. Where he was like, oh yeah, look at this sad thing that happened over here. And then he was like, oh, I killed her. And then it was like, no, you didn't, Lamau. But you admitted to killing this other person, Lamau. It was great. Uh, where am I going again? Oh yeah, I was right there on the cathedral. 
It's so good, gosh. Colombo is the best, by the way. E everyone who's like, everyone else, you need to watch Colombo. Colombo is so good. It is the best. It is the best show. God, I love Colombo. He's explaining what ha what he did. Oh, rip le 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 Ooh. Mm. Water. Beautiful. Also, in order to fix something that happened last time this broke... Bye-bye. There we go. <laughs> I must say, Master le I am most extremely disappointed that anyone, much less a student of our upstanding establishment, would commit such atrocities. I am truly at a loss for words. <sighs> yes. Headmaster, Headmistress El Elvian, if I may, do you not find the timing of these confessions to be incredibly convenient? It says if Master Lebessois here has been coerced into admitting to crimes he himself did not commit, let us not rush to condemn a man who may very well be innocent. <gasps> what? He must also keep in mind that this incident will have repercussions that extend beyond the scholasticate. Distrust of our church has ever been so high. Hmm. If we were to expel either one of our prefects, both of whom have strong ties to House Zamil, we will lose any credibility our establishment still has in the eyes of the citizens. To this end, I would propose an alternative plan. We will make a full disclosure of the scandal to the public, together with an announcement that St. Endelim's Scholasticate will be temporarily closed. It is past time that we push for a full reformation of the school and its curriculum. And there it is, the confession I've been waiting for. What? <gasps> Riardian? A confession? Hmm. Confession? Master Briardian, explain yourself. From the start, I had my suspicions that someone was pulling strings behind the scenes. Someone who had secured a high enough position within the clergy to manipulate the students and their system. I poured through the records, closely examining any who fit his description. It was no easy task, but I finally found what I was searching for. And combined with the confession Theomacent obtained from Lebessois, I was able to uncover the true culprit. Huh? What? I speak of you, Saturnoi, and I do not call you father, for you are no priest. The documents admitting you to your current position were all forged. Hmm. You manipulated Le Bessois into carrying out what you yourself could not. You stirred up discord among the students and fomented the people's distrust of the clergy in the hopes of creating an even greater rift between the people of Ishgard and the clergy, all in the hopes of seeing the scholasticate closed down once and for all. But I don't understand. Why would Father Santanoi seek the ruin of the scholasticate? The answer to that would lie in his past. Over a decade ago, Saturnoi graduated top of his class and was welcomed into the ranks of the Holy See. It was there he was assigned work as an expurgator. Expurgator? What are you talking about? In all my years serving the Holy See, I've never heard of such a post. You would be I would be more surprised if you had. A holy body of decency, a sector that is comprised of a few select individuals, is perhaps the best kept secret of many Ish of Ishgard's many. Its existence is known only to a handful of people besides the Archbishop himself. Shing! Hmm. I'm impressed.
Yes, Master Beardian. It would seem your reputation is well deserved. Though I must correct you on one account. I'm no expurgator, but w rather one of the so-called watchmen consigned to guard them. That said, we shared a similar fate. Both expurgator and watchmen alike were struck from official records and combined to the bowels of the Holy See. Damned to live out our lives in the shadows as pallid husks of the men and women we, would, we could have been. Also that someday we might fulfill one task. Where written records were deemed too dangerous, expurgators would serve as living documents, orally passing down our nation's greatest secrets. When the time came for the Archbishop's successor to ascend the throne, we would emerge briefly from our isolation to pass on our, from our mouths to their ears all we knew of Ishgard before slinking back into obscurity. Huh? Of course, no highborn man or woman would be condemned to this fate. No, this was a destiny reserved for commoners, orphans with no ties to the world above. Ben was asking at the very beginning, why was it Theomacent and Lee only? Why couldn't he join? There was no need. They only need an expurgator and a watchman. Seven L's! So if the truth hadn't come to light, then Theo and I... Men and women forced to sacrifice their own lives, that their nation's darkest secrets might be preserved forever unbeknownst to her people. I can scarce believe my ears. Father Saturnoi, the friend you spoke of. Yes, he was an expurgator. Such anguish did his duties cause him that he chose death over that wretched excuse for a life. And while a new era is upon us, one that does not condemn the innocent to a life of despair for the sake of one man, it does not undo the injustice of a thousand years. It was to right the wrongs of the past that I escaped that foul dungeon and made my way back to the place where it all began. This twisted institution, the place responsible for stealing the bright futures of our young orphans, it needs to be closed down for good. Father Saturnoi. Your actions are heinous, and I can in no way condone them. That said, if there is truth to what you say, perhaps it would be best for us to suspend all lessons until we can reach a consensus as to how we might proceed. <sighs> but the headmistress Elvian, would not closing down the Scholasticate be akin to evading our responsibility as men and women of the clergy? It is our duty to speak the truth, not bury it. For too long the people have been fed naught but lies. It is time we took the initiative to give them reason to put their faith in us once more. I must agree with the innocent. <gasps> As I have learned firsthand, we must take care never to abuse our power and privilege, lest we hurt the people closest to us. To keep silent would be to repeat the mistakes of our past. <sighs> the only way we can move forward is to take responsibility for our actions, and make an earnest effort to reach out to those we have wronged. While we may never receive forgiveness, at least we can attempt to atone for any anguish we may have caused those that did not deserve it. It is true that all men are born equal, as I have heard so many in this room preach time and again. Then all are entitled to know the truth. Let us lead by example and freely share all that we have learned here today. Father Saturnoi, while I cannot pretend to understand your ordeal or sue the fury that has taken hold in your heart, I can promise you one thing. I swear on Father Chasseau's copy of Parables of St. Danifin that not you nor any of those who shared your fate will ever again be forgotten.
This was all laid bare before the public. The atrocities suffered by expurgator and watchmen alike, along with the hand of the scholastic and the Holy See and their terrible demise. See, it's so fast! That's why I, I, I removed it. So it was that a new path was forged that day, one that I would see a renewed faith in the church and its teachings where the citizens would come to learn that all men should be regarded as equal, not only in the eyes of Helone, but also by one another. Got it. That one I got. The other one. Oh, that's so fast. But that's why I left it up. I left the thing up. And back it goes. Uh, there, well, the thing that happened with it that I had been watching is that, um, a lot of the, the, uh, the, the episodes were broken for some reason, so I haven't watched, I, I watched, like, all of season one and then I stopped, so. Theo was a born detective. He told me he went to speak with the inspector because he thought it suspicious that Father Sachinoy was pushing so hard to have our combatant expelled. Sure enough, it turned out that he was the one pulling the strings all along. Well, I'm glad this ordeal is finally behind us. I cannot help but feel as though we've lost one of our own. We, shall, we share the same origins as Father Sachinoy and would have shared the same fate had it not been for you. Kalosa, thank you for restoring peace to the Scholasticate. You've reminded us that there's a world beyond these doors that relies as much upon that relies as much upon us as we do them. You have opened our eyes and shown us that destiny is but the choices we make. If we are strong and persevere, I have no doubt we can rebuild the Scholasticate and regain the people's trust. Mm -hmm. Kulsa, now that your work here is done, I suppose the time for farewells is upon us. Would you be departing Ishgard immediately? Sad to say farewell, but let's send you and the inspector off in style. I think this is because the final thing was during patch uh, 3.5, so we, we, it was around that time that we were actually beginning to start leaving Ishgard for other places. Three point three would still be around that time. We're gonna be doing other stuff in three point four. Ah, oh, my trusted associate. I feared I might not be able to bid you a proper b farewell before I left. On behalf of my uncle, allow me to thank you for all your hard work. There's still so much fighting and bickering going on. Couldn't you stay with us just a little bit longer? I fear there are more pressing mysteries that demand my attention, not to mention a certain young lady in Ulda who awaits my return. Oh, Briardi and Giddy! Woo! Uh, another client of yours, I take it. The Alma sent you, sweet tiny boy. Theo, is your head screwed on backwards? He's talking about his girl. <laughs> Tactless fools, the both of you. But I suppose you're nothing if not sincere, eh, Theo? <gasps> and while I admit that naivete is one, is one of your more endearing traits, combined with the blunderings of the idiot beside you, it's like as not to bring the Scholastica to ruin, which is why you'll need someone with extensive knowledge of the affairs of Ishgard and the proper connections to actually bring about the change you seek. Someone like me. Huh? Huh? Oh. Words of a man looking to steal away his way into our dear Theo's heart. Ha ha ha. Placey lit. Seems you've got competition. What? No way. The Fury take you all. Call me what you will, but Theo would never replace me with anyone, much less a conniving snake like our Combatin. <laughs> How refreshing it is to hear such playful banter among my friends. The almost said you. I'm telling you, this guy is a harem protagonist. Jeez. It would seem our worries are finally behind us. Before we celebrate, however, there is one last thing. Lacey, I'd like to thank you for your support. Were it not for your meticulous notes and your sharp eyes, Ula would still be missing. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. bird. Yay! 
everyone looking at Theo like he's because he's the harem protagonist. Hello, sir, Inspector. Words are not ex enough to express our gratitude. It was only because of you that we were able to unmask the perpetrator and restore peace to our school. Just as Father Chasseau brought, brought you to us in Gorgane Mills, I cannot help but feel Halone guided you to us in our time of need. We hope to one day repay the kindness you have showed us by rebuilding this Galacticate. When next you visit, we hope she will have retaken her place as the nation's top establishment of higher learning and once again serve to life the people's way back to the halls of Halone. Good luck, you dorks. <laughs> Get one more pan across the group. A fair nation has seen her share of tragedy and turmoil, but I take heart in knowing that there are those such as yourself to watch over her and see that she does not stray from her course till we meet again. Bow. See you around. <laughs> Colosa, look elsewhere. Theo is too young to be another one of your dads. He's my son, okay? Nothing weird going on. Just a son. It's okay. I can adopt. I, I, Colosa got adopted several times, so now she's going to adopt a few sons. That's fine. Um, I'm not going to talk about what's coming up next because this is a little timey-wimey going on here. Um. Uh, we'll talk we'll talk about it also i'm tired and my throat hurts i love you all but i'm going to bed thank you all so much for coming i'm going